That song will never get old. <laughs> <laughs> so last weekend in uh, the distant shores of New Zealand. Mordor. Um, yeah, basically. I it, thought, no, Hobbiton, right? Yeah, oh, oh, it, I think it was all filmed the, the, there. All, the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. Right. Was, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> the whole series. Yeah, right, right by Mordor there in, the town, <laughs> in, a, in a city called Manfield um, in New Zealand. Lance Stroll. Yes. Lance Stroll, he won. So, so. Oh, Canada. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So, so Lance Stroll, I've been, I've been talking about this kid. I've been actually following his career uh, for a long time. We, we, we have been. Um, and this, uh, so far this year, the, the first part of this year, I guess, up until now, he's been taking part of the New Zealand um, uh, Toyota Racing Series. Mm. Um, and they, they race on cars much like this. Well, actually, th this is his car, um, <laughs> obviously. Much, yeah. much like F1. <laughs> much like, yeah, much like F1. No, I mean, they're, 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 they're single seaters, and like, but you, you can tell some of the elements. These, these, these are these are proper race cars. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not nowhere near the technical level of F1, but you can see some elements for sure. Um, so it's a proper single seater uh, racing series. And and Lance Stroll, our our boy from Canada, he he oh yeah he he is the champion, the champion, the champion. He won, and he won the last race too. Yeah, he won oh, the last race. Fuck, closed out yeah. the season in style. Yeah, good for him. And actually, that last race that he won um, is called the New Zealand Grand Prix. Now, yeah, um, this goes back. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure I've told you guys before. Um, before F1, there, there, there used to be these competitions called Grand Prix, a national Grand Prix. You used to be like the, the highest motor racing like race right. um, of each country. Right. And actually, the, the FIA right now uh, only recognizes uh, races that are called Grand Prix uh, as being the ones in the F1 calendar, except for two. The Macau Grand Prix and the New Zealand Grand Prix. So this is this is a this is a proper New it's Zealand proper one. yeah New Zealand mm. Grand Prix recognized by the FIA and our boy Lance Stroll he won he won he won, it. He won the race and he is a he is a champion congratulations <laughs> yeah and he got Mr. Stroll the, oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, this kid this kid is actually going places and I I, I tell well he, other than the obvious like. A factor that he has <laughs> he won the tons race. of money, and he, he he's he does seem to be a pretty good driver. All in all, you know, it's it's not like well, he's. I, I would say so. Well, yeah, he, but he, <laughs> he he's not like a like a Max Chilton that you know got mediocre results and still made it to F one. He's yeah, he's clearly yeah, he's clearly doing something right. Doing he, something. He's in the Ferrari Driver Academy. Hmm. Um, he's yeah, he's one of the youngest uh, there, or one of the youngest that got signed for it. His dad, um, dad's got money to push him. Yeah, his dad has got billions it's to push kind him. Of necessary these days. Yeah, well, but it's yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's just one of the things that uh, the intricacies of the sport right now. Um, and after this, he's gonna race in the European Formula Three series right. uh, for the Prema team. And now European Formula Three, that's where. Max Verstappen came from last year. That's that's so Max Verstappen. He was European Formula Three last year. Now this year he's in F one. Unfortunately, so he kind of ruined the whole yeah, points he, requirement age yeah. type thing for this dude. Thanks Verstappen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this Verstappen kid got signed for for a professional Formula One team. Yeah. And then he but he was he's seventeen. He's gonna be racing next year. He's seventeen. Yeah. And like shortly after like it was announced like. The, the, the head haunches of F1 basically like, were like, no, this cannot happen again. <laughs> Minimum entry no age of 18. No more children must be 18 years yeah. old. Oh, fuck. And there is the point requirements needed from your previous experience to get it, your super license. Anyway, but so, I, I think he's on the right I think track. Also affects him probably. Yeah, it, it probably does. But he's, well, this championship helps him for sure. Oh yeah. He doesn't, I don't think he needs to win F3 next year to. To get enough to points, get enough points to get a super license to be considered for F one. Well, he, he's probably what's probably going to happen is that he so he's in Prema doing Formula uh, Formula Three, right? right. Um, he has two years that he knows he can be in F one. They're probably going to want like for the Ferrari Driving Academy like, has got him on on actually 
like so so he, he's participating on two major competitions this new zealand one that he just won and then the rest of the year he's basically going to be around europe racing formula three so that's oh, okay. this year do you know then, what team he's racing for prima prima it's called prima powered prima prima team or something it's, it's an italian based team which is very fitting because he's his association with ferrari yeah mm -hmm. Um, then uh, I'm sure that next year, because he still can't go into F1, um, Ferrari will probably find a way to keep him busy with GP2 or something, honing his racecraft. But right, it, one of the things that was very interesting is that at the very beginning of the season of this of this racing series in New Zealand, he basically dominated everything, and actually he finished yeah. he finished the, with uh, 108 points ahead. <laughs> of, of of his closest competitor, so so and, and and people are calling him Mr. Consistency, like that's what they were calling it, referring him to in New Zealand. So and and that is that is one Jeez. of yeah, that is, is one this, of the attributes. Is this his thing? He's like Vettel, but he's got his finger turned the other way. <laughs> I guess Vettel, so, yeah, does, like, Vettel does this one. He's got this he's, one. He's got <laughs> <laughs> maybe he maybe he's trying to start something. Um, but, but and I think that that's something very uh, very good for an F1 driver because. We have we have some drivers that can be brilliant, can be magnificent, and will pull off some fantastic performances, but just not all the time. Mm. If you're there, if you're a reliable driver, then that you can be counted on to extract as much of the car as right. possible, okay. time and time again. Right. That that goes, that that may be priced even higher than having one or two hot laps that broke a record. You know what I mean? It's great for him, but one big difference between this and Formula One is that I'm sure. These cars don't have as many mechanical problems, or well, they're, they're not, and not as much probably luck factored in, or like oh, well, everybody's racing with basically the same car, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's almost like a spec series. Good for him, though. Good for him. Well, honestly, really, I guess that makes it more impressive because if everybody's got the same equipment, right? He's destroying them in their own car. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, at, the, at these, you can't at the, say like, oh, your car was so much better; it never broke down. Exactly. It's nothing to do with the car. Yeah. It's it's Which all about, it's, it's all about his uh, his his maple syrup that I'm sure he's consuming every day for breakfast. <laughs> anyway, this is the Flat Out Fever Formula One podcast. Yes, it is. <laughs> With uh, Jay, Danny here, and Mike, and we're gonna talk today about uh, the future of F1, maybe if, among maybe. other things. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a future. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Could be bright. Yeah, well, it might not be. If, and and that, that's, that's Will something. Will out? Well, but but that's that's something that's very interesting right now. And I was thinking about this last night before going to bed. And it's that the the sport right now where I see it is is at a very crucial point where it can go for another hundred years, or it could go for maybe another t ten, twenty at, at most. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm sure they'll figure it out. Ber eventually, Bernie will get out of the picture, and they'll. Jump onto the uh, can, can social we, media. Can we thought wagon? experiment for one for one sure. second? Let's do it. Yes. So I always That's have this, this idea. Is about. Yeah. I always have this idea about like say like hockey or like other sports. Right. But say like there's a um, um, uh, a new technology that comes out. You know, say like yes. uh, sort of. Let's say we've mastered gravity. Mm -hmm. We can now have anti gravity. Right. Now this technology would be really I mean like imagine like anti gravity hockey essentially like get rid of the skates oh, get rid of, yeah. I'm not saying it, it would replace yeah. it but, but like yeah, yeah. it's a possibility right now imagine something like that came to F1 where like how would that impact the sport would 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 F1 adopt that or would they were like no nah, we're going to stick to uh, rubber road and you know how how do you think that would play out? The ideal is this is like twenty fifty twenty xx right? Down, yeah, down, down the road. Well, did you did you did you see Back to the Future? I did. I'm waiting for my hoverboards right now. You know what I mean? Because it's a twenty fifteen. You know, when they go to the future, they go to twenty fifteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are my hoverboards? Hoverboards exist, yeah. but they only work on uh, like magnetic. magic surface yeah. and Tony Hawk surface. Yeah. No, okay, but, but what you said is is very interesting. Sorry, Danny, to cut you off, but. No. I, I, <laughs> I think that it it is one of those things that might get looked at, but mm. just the way that the regulations are right now might not allow something drastic like that to take right. over, <laughs> right? I mean, like, and and that that is essentially one of one of the biggest problems right now um, that 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 F one is facing is that. You know, looking looking to curb uh, costs and to and 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 to, to 
to pass the regulations in, in, uh, that would advance in, in the safety of the sport and things right. like that over the years. Maybe right now we, we're stuck with a formula that is that is maybe too constraining. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think it, a lot of people agree to that. Yeah, remember that uh, because it seems like yeah. the, the cars of now versus the cars of yesteryear uh, yesteryear like <laughs> fucking years ago like they're yeah. clearly drastically different cars oh for and sure because of the science yeah. and uh the the amount of time and effort put into like these machines has caused it to go in this direction one way or another the fact that it yeah. has gone yeah. in any direction would sort of indicate that it should keep on going in a direction exactly you know right? and, I, and i agree 100 yeah. percent with you i mean the 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 stuff that you described, the the, the, the drastic changes, those have happened mm -hmm. before in, in the mm -hmm. past. But I think that well, the, this, this new engine formula was a drastic change that yeah, but, but changed it was, the whole sport. It was it was kind of it's it's, a it was kind of a sport, calculated no. change. It wasn't a yeah. spontaneous change that happened. The, the way things used to happen in the past and back in the sixties. Um, for example, and in the 70s when they first started introducing things like uh, the monocoque, because mm. um, before uh, F1 cars used to be built around a frame, so they would build the whole chassis first and then uh, bolt okay. sort things. Sort of bolt the seat inside yeah, there. Yeah, bolt things into the okay, chassis. Got it. And then, and then one team came with the idea of, oh, wait, we don't have to actually do that. We can like build basically like the shape of the car and bolt things onto that instead of the instead of having a frame you know but that's reducing weight okay a, lo a lot of that came from uh safety as well with the mm -hmm. survival cell being brought in yeah mm -hmm. they have this basically a tub that everyone has to sit in it's like uncrushable tub yeah. okay so uh i went off another tangent in yeah. my head Go so ahead. like okay yeah. say for instance um safety technology right becomes like no one could possibly die. Imagine right. no one could right. die from, a, from yeah. an F1 yeah. race. Like, obviously, like, you would push your car to the boundaries. Would you? But that's, you know what? And and, yeah. and, 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 and that is something, because it, it, it reminds me of, uh, <laughs> do you ever watch I'm that? Like, that's, I'm like, sorry, I'm a weird no, futurist today. No, you know that stupid, silly movie, uh, fucking, uh, Rev? That they try to do for um, Speed Racer, the Speed Racer, like the live action oh, movie, yeah, 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 how yeah. they had like those like balls that would envelop the driver, and like if anything happened, if the car was getting ah, totaled, right, right, they, they, yeah, they yeah. got like they got saved because they bounced <laughs> out of the car and like yeah. they somehow survived, right? <laughs> if you could achieve something like that, like that that the driver would have a hundred percent of survival, just. Like if you could achieve that tomorrow, yeah, the rules are such that they would just not be allowed to then go ahead and say like, oh, you know, because we're not dying, can we go ahead and then just like extract as much of the car? No, they can't now because everything is so constrained. Yeah. yeah. So and and, and 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 that's why that's why we're one of the biggest decisions that F1 is for sure as a, as a whole sport and, and the big power players are going to have to take soon is do we go back to the rule book? And revise everything that doesn't need to be there out mm. excluded let's let's make changes that will allow for more flexibility because back in the day when there were when when the rules were a bit more flexible teams could innovate teams could bring in things like you know like over plates or whatever no. <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah if, if that technology yeah, had been yeah. discovered in the 70s it yeah. would for sure be an f1 right now in one way yeah. or another yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of people are upset about the how constrained it is right now, right? Because there's not a lot of innovation. But when you look at it, I don't know. For our, our F1 as a whole is so convoluted with the politics that the lower teams can't afford to do those they innovation, can't innovate. innovative type stuff, right? right. Exactly. Okay, but they like, can afford well, to barely, barely put a car together that well, I mean, fits the rules and e even that, make it to the track. Even that being said, like uh, obviously there are constraints to innovation based on bureaucracy exactly. and, and yeah. all that kind of... A yeah. lot of that, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Wow. It, it, and it is Streamline embedded... Streamline that process, man. A lot of safety, yeah. too. Yeah. They, they tried to slow down the cars a bunch. Okay. Like, uh, was that for safety's sake? I yeah. Mean, obviously. Yeah. yeah, they were getting I, really fast yeah. with I'll, the blown diffusers, like, up two and three years ago, I guess three and four years ago. Okay. And, and even before that, with the uh, with the V8s of, or V10s of 2004, for example, the cars were just getting so fast that people were concerned, like, oh, will anybody die or whatever. Right? Yeah, when you go back on YouTube now and you watch an onboard from the end of the V10s, like, it's crazy, man. And when they they were going through at that time, back at that time, like, engines per weekend. Oh, Jesus. Like, they're just, like, ripping. It, it, it just sounds like the... 
Like it, the sound, you can just tell how crazy it was. But it, beca it became an, it became an to, issue where like it. they 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 decided to curb a lot of things in the, you know in the name of safety mm -hmm. and in the name of keeping costs down so that smaller teams could compete. Yeah, um, they are literally burning like hundreds of engines per team per year. Now they're reduced to four per car. Jesus, this year the yeah. new the new rules yeah. over the last about I don't know five six seven years. They've slowly reduced it to eight, to seven, 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 to seven, to seven. Which, I mean, like, it, 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 it is like F1, like looking back, some, some of those rules are like, you know, they are, of course, for, for cost cutting and, 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 and for safety. Mm -hmm. But also some of them, like where, especially the, the more recently, they have been introduced to, to kind of have, be like more level headed and, 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 and just bring the sport uh, more close to what's going on with road cars, like make it more, more relevant for a company like, that makes road car, for example, to to jump into F1 and say, well, maybe we can learn something from from the sport. I think or, I, was gonna, I think there, I think there's been a lot of um, a lot of development in material science as well that allows an engine to last so many kilometers, making the same amount of horsepower with less displacement, less RPM, less fuel. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, but at the same time, they do have. And the remember when I when I printed the the F1 rule book the you know the 2015 sporting regulation technical regulations yeah one bit of the technical regulations actually does state what kind of materials can be used to build for example the body of the car and not I mean I, w I was reading through the the list of requirements and for example right now if if the um, if graphene for example you know if anybody anybody that's been following the the development of graphene yeah. as a science and material material science it's, it's a very breakthrough uh, it's it's it, like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy once they figure out how to make like big sheets of graphene. Yeah. But w once they it's do, it's uh, very lightweight, very durable. Oh yeah, it's yeah. So it's gonna be like one of the strongest materials. Like, it's, but it's, yeah, it comes in these sheets anyway. When they when they yeah, strongest and lightest. But when they figure out how to make graphene properly, and let's say they let's say they figure it out by the end of this year, next year, like just because of the the rules of F one, they might not be able to add anything any graphene parts yet. You know what I mean? Just because yeah. they're constrained, the rules. yeah, okay. they're, 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 and, and it's like, and it's a question of engineers and designers clashing against the rule book here and there. Now, the rule book does have some good parts of it. I mean, it's there for a reason, and 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 and, and Formula One wouldn't be Formula One if it didn't if it wasn't structured that way, right? Going back to Formula One being here's a set of rules, right. build a car and race it. Uh, but, but but is it too much? Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> it should be able. To, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Graphene is a whole new frontier. Mm -hmm. What what I meant more about the uh, reliability though was um, not the body because every, every car is basically carbon fiber now. Yeah. But uh, the materials that are used more on things like the cylinder liners, the piston heads, the valve springs. Those are the things that are taking all the load of these engines and oh, yeah. wearing <laughs> wearing out instantly. Where they where they're not anymore. Yeah. Lasting weekends, weeks and weeks. I don't know. I think before we get any deeper into this, let's uh, wrap up this contest from last week. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So last before week, we, or, or the last few weeks, we've been uh, we've been having a contest uh, for you to send us some entry of some sort that we announce every week, um, and for the chance to win a racing for me invite. Yes. If you don't valuable. know what racing for me is, I don't know. Go on Reddit and try to find out. Cause I'm not gonna <laughs> tell you. Yeah. Check it out online. Congrats to our first two winners. Great entries. Yeah, the first two. <laughs> the first two. Okay, <laughs> they were hilarious, but but we couldn't really show them, uh, and that's why we asked for this week's entry to be okay. Send us for a text entry. Yeah, send us a message and tell us tell us what you will do or tell tell us why you should get this invite, <laughs> and 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 out, out of the whatever what was it like do, a dozen or so entries yeah, we that we got about a dozen. Um, zest. Yeah, you, zest. You, you found a great winner. one. <laughs> yeah, uh, this dude sent us, I assume is a, a male, sent us a message through YouTube, through, uh, a, through a YouTube and, channel. And, and, and Zest, really. Z-E-S-T. Z yeah, Z-E-S-T. If, if you are not a male, if you're a female, please send us pictures as well. <laughs> yeah, there's a... Because we want to hang out with you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you won. Uh, we're going to read the entry here. <laughs> we asked basic. We asked for a laugh, basically. And, and okay, so and bear in mind the, the the name of the website is Racing for Me. Okay. Okay. Racing I'm in, for I'm in the mice. dot me. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, his entry. I want to enjoy some racing for me. For me, the very thought that I could have easy access to F1 and WEC content as if the cars were racing for me gets me racing. I do support motorsport. In fact, you could say that me for racing. If I had a team racing for me, I would it, rather it be me racing. Racing for me is an integral part of my daily routine. <laughs> wait, wait, for me, the old adage goes, endurance before bed keeps you right in the head. Mm -hmm. And who could forget Formula One in the morning keeps the norepinephrine flowing. Storming, I'm sorry. <laughs> and of course, rally during lunch. Have some crunch while you munch. And most importantly, oh, when I misclick my bookmarks, I won't feel like the start page is mocking me, which it kind of does if you try to go there without an invite. Uh, the important things in life, gentlemen, they, they matter. matter. Yes, oh, they do, Zest. Uh, oh, well, Expect well a message. You for, are a poet, sir. Expect a message this <laughs> afternoon. You can race all for you. All you want. <laughs> the whole season <laughs> and every other season from now on. Yeah, I know. And actually, oh, that's, that, that, that is a good point. Uh, uh, with racing for me, it's, it's not just about F1. You can access uh, the World Endurance Championship. So like the, the prototype cars are yeah, racing, cars. sports cars are racing. They have IndyCar, ra uh, NASCAR, uh, all kinds of racing in there. It yeah, is it's like it just it, it's uh, the it's notorious for the quality and the speed uh, of the F1 downloads, but they do have yeah. everything. They have everything else. Because F1 is the biggest. I'll be right back. So. All righty. All righty. Okay. So, so yeah, we're going to announce uh, round four. That was round three. Got yeah. two more rounds to go, guys. Um, keep your creative juices going. What yes. are we asking for this week? Um, send us your favorite corner of F1. Um, Oh, oh, yeah, okay, something okay. similar. Give us a paragraph, yeah. sentence. Yeah. If you can make it funny, photo. that's obviously better. But uh, yeah. yeah. They increase your chances dramatically of winning. <laughs> a photo or something. Um, I, I, I think that this was inspired because I, I was thinking, okay, you know, there are some corners in F1 that of old F1 tracks, for example, or, or tracks that have been redesigned that just plain wouldn't be allowed anymore. Yeah, it, there's it, definitely a few. Like I was saying, like uh, Jerez, I think it's the old Jerez, the last yeah. two corners. Insane. Somehow Monaco keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> well, Monaco <laughs> has to stay. Like, everybody yeah. knows. But the old Tamburello uh, in, uh, of the Imola circuit, just uh, fast sweeping corners that just wouldn't go right now. Look at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico. Oh, that corner that they butchered, the Peraltada? They butchered the Peraltada, and about five or six corners behind that got smoothed out. They yeah. took out about half the degrees of each they had, bend. They had those crazy S's before. Half the radius of each corner of those S's is gone. If you are... Which, if you, and, sorry, if you compare that, though, to um, Austin, mm. was very similar aside from the runoff. Yeah, I have no which, idea why they had to get rid of those. I mean... I think it's the runoff areas uh, to probably. reach the new grade one requirements for F1 circuits. Yeah, so I, I, maybe these uh, grade one requir requirements are getting too out of hand. But if you want to be nostalgic and think of, of your uh, best... Corners, you know, if Past, if, if, if you want to go back, if you want to go back to Zolder, if you want to go back to anything, just send us. What corner do you prefer in F one, or 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 or, or what, what's your favorite corner? Tell us a story. Maybe tell why. us why. That's it. Good luck. Yeah, make it funny. Find out <laughs> next week who won. Um, going back to what we were talking about before, though. Yeah. I th I think that this is a big story this week because <sighs> F one is getting a little. Crazy in the politics department. Yeah, it, it's, it's it's definitely. But if, if we didn't have, if we stripped F one out of those crazy rules that wouldn't allow it, for example, to um, to to bring you know ho Hoover plates or whatever. The way you said it, the way you say Hoover is so adorable. <laughs> Hoover. Hover. 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 Yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm not correcting you. Don't you, get me wrong. I'm it's a so right. <laughs> me, me so foreign. But um, if if you didn't have those. Then, uh, then you could have what something would we be like doing right now. Well, you could have like the, the that concept car that you were talking about. Yeah, you want to pull that up? Red yeah. Bull or sorry, Ferrari threw that up. The third oh, one oh, 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 oh! Yeah, that this one. one. Here we go. Yeah, Ferrari threw this up uh, yesterday, I think, on Twitter. I think really, um, this thing looks fucking crazy. That's what yeah, it's well, supposed this, to do. This is what we kind of been talking about the last three or four weeks about uh, the speculation about the rule changes for 2016 and 17 with the thousand right. horsepower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Basically, um, 
Red Bull, Ferrari, and McLaren are the teams that are most pushing for these new rules. And uh, all the other teams are kind of not because of the money. Right. We, sort of like the innovators again. Basically, yeah. yeah. What Clearly, the, if, they, if they have sort of money to throw into an idea or a concept like this. But Okay, but click over one link quickly before we move on. Yeah. This is the back of, and if you get maybe a side view, it doesn't well, it doesn't really matter. This is what the current Indy cars look like, which is very similar hmm. and much more efficient aerodynamically. Like these Indy cars with those covers over the back wheels. Yeah. First of all, as far as safety goes, you can't touch one of those with your open front wheels and fly over the your opponent's head. Oh, jeez. Well, and, right, uh, which would happen in F one. Yeah, apparently. Those create, and with if you look at if you can see the sides, the floorboards of the car compared in conjunction with those back wheel covers, create so much extra downforce that on certain tracks they actually use the back wing to reduce the downforce. Oh, shit. yeah, which is so you can go back. That, that is a very peculiar problem that they're faced with yeah. right now. Yeah, so if you go back there to the Ferrari, you can scroll down to you can see the, the other angle of it. From uh, the back. Ooh. It's very similar, right. To oh what, shit! To what Indy's already doing and been doing. Yeah. This is basically this looks awesome. Yeah, <laughs> this looks great. Yeah, I think I'm it's, okay with this. It's aerodynamic, but a lot. Yeah, there's an Indy car underneath the target. That's what they look. The target car, right? right Chip there. Ganassi race. Tarje, Tarje, Tarje. But yeah, basically, a lot. I like aerodynamically. It works a lot better, and safety-wise, it works a lot better because you can't have these cars touch each other and flip over like what happened to Weber a few years ago. Right. And yeah. But I'm assuming, is this carbon fiber here? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. The whole thing? Are, yeah, yeah, everything's all, carbon, all fiber. Everything's carbon fiber. Jeez. All of it. Yeah. Even new cars, too. Yeah. That's a drying. But yeah, you, if you, you just know, add I'm, glowing parts to this and you <laughs> raise it off the ground, that's fucking, that's hoverboard territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it starts looking like a spaceship, not so much yeah. like a car, right? Yeah. But well, no, that's the future, man. That, that is that's, the that's future. Or or will or will it like be like a dying sport, like European handball? You see, which I played last week, but <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but like, is it F one going to stay like F one, or like when that new technology well, comes, will it? Sorry to go back to that, but no, no, no. I, I want to go so back to that. Actually, like, yeah, yeah. I, I really want to go back to that because. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Danny. Um, yeah, I was going to say like basically this is what Bernie has been pushing for for next year though. Basically, he wanted oh, really the engines, uh, the thousand horsepower deal and all that. Probably 2017. Now they're saying, uh, in official language, possibly 2017. Okay. So we got at least two more years of the current formula anyways. This is uh, the little Pirelli talk we did last week. These are the concepts for where they want to go with the tires, the 18-inch rims. Okay. The lower profile tires, the fat back wheels. The cars are actually going to be wider. Like, if you go to the Indy car, you can just see, or even the next uh, tab over... You can see how much, like, it's noticeably the body of the car is wider than in Formula One. Right, right. Gives you a lot more grip. Are these are these corners. tires here? Are they bigger than the front ones? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In in Ferrari, or sorry, in, in Formula, Formula One, one and well. in Indy. Oh, really? It's like that's just the, in yeah. Formula One. It's a smaller difference. It's a oh, smaller okay. difference. But this is what they're pushing for is yeah. the okay bigger difference. You get a lot more grip. But, oh, I had a question but, about this. I saw this sorry, go ahead. Circu circulating around. Uh, yeah. This here. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's attached, like his head is attached. Well, that eventually what, what you want, um, and, 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 and racing drivers right that. now, um, what, what they have on their helmet is like sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's not because they make it with like transparent plastic. Right. But they have this like little wing, almost like a spoiler, oh, like shit. sticking out of like the back of their car, of, of their helmet. But the thing is that what, what you want is that you, your helmet to not be... Um, like a, an aero negative element, right? Right, okay, because your that. your head sticking out of the car is actually something that the designers of these cars really don't like, right? <laughs> because it, yeah. no, it no messes shit. the airflow, right? Yeah, totally. So yeah, what they're what they're saying here is that if they somehow like came up with a solution to mold like to meld like the the driver's helmet with the rest of the bodywork, that right. would work fantastically because you're getting some some air coming from here and then whoosh, going right to the back down right. to this yeah down to the diffuser or something doing some crazy stuff with the aerodynamics. And sorry, alternatively, uh, I don't know, they've sort of been talking about this for a couple of years on and off. I remember seeing maybe three or four years ago, BBC had some sort of engineering special about testing cockpits. Mm -hmm. The talk came up again last year after Gilles Bianchi 
smashed his head about uh, basically building a cockpit. Actually, I didn't send you the link, but pull it up. Uh, the Red Bull X 2010. You can search that quick. Which uh, Red Bull put this out a few years ago as a concept Wait, by uh, Adrian. Sorry, X 2014. Yeah, the 2014. Yeah, that's the newer one, I guess. This is uh, basically a concept that Adrian Newey put together that would be his his Whoa. fucking dream. He's actually leaving, I believe, Red Bull because of the restrictive rules. That basically he's saying, like, this year, last year, as, yeah, as far as F1, he's, he's like the, the designer in F1. He's like, as far as aerodynamics goes. But he's, he's leaving because he's disillusioned, he's bored with it. He's saying basically last year and this year the cars are almost designed for you, which they're very restrictive on the right. Yeah, so like this was over, windshield, this was over, like cockpit. Yeah, like, yeah. Shit, this is probably where it's going eventually. Yeah, they're, they're okay, saying that so this looks like if there's another accident, it's gonna happen for sure. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't look like F1 cars don't look safe to me. I, well, what do I know? But I mean, like they don't feel safe to me. Well, I mean, one. Serious injury in twenty years, though. Oh, okay. As a so result of a crash, at all. they've got a lot. Like they, they've Aside got, they've gone really, really far. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it with, seems with all safety. one in twenty years. I mean, that's the yeah. no, yeah, no casualties since Senna. Felipe Massa so. got hit with a spring. He was in a coma. I think it was a spring. Bounced off another car. Ugh. Hit him in the face, and then uh, Gilles Bianchi. You saw his crash right into the back hole or whatever he hit. Anyway. But if it happens again, I think they'll bring these. They've tested them. They've, they've built. They've been. They've been dealing. Like, they've been toying with the idea of of doing something like this. I think the the main safety consideration is that um, if the car flips over and lands like you know like upside down, yeah. then how is the driver going to get out? Mm. Um, but I mean, other than that, if the cars and also if the cars end up looking like this, um, would it like would it be I think I think they think that the fans won't really like that, but psh, I don't. I think it'd bring actually yeah. new fans. <laughs> yeah, if every other because if it looks like a sci-fi race from the future, I'm yeah. fucking in. Man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Every yeah. other type of racing, like Le Mans or whatever, any of those. Any. Oh other wait, I know what I want. Covered. I know what I want F1 to turn into. You're sitting in a cockpit. <laughs> Here we go. Um. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's probably some of the inspiration. Yeah, look at this shit. Yeah. Super Nintendo. They've Boom. been thinking about this for since way back. <laughs> yeah, then. they knew what was going on. <laughs> at Falcon. Where, where is it at? <laughs> that's what I'm talking. Oh, Wii U. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah. See, this is anti grav, and then like these like twenty foot story turns. Yeah, but that's an oval. If you look at the uh, at oh, the yeah, track yeah. design here, so screw that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want F one to ever like have to resort to racing in ovals ever uh, again. Okay. No. <laughs> what about loop de loops? <laughs> <laughs> loop de loops will be cool. Yeah. This, once you, Ra some rainbow road yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. Once you invent anti gravity. Yeah. yeah. That's gonna be. Let's it's, do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's. <laughs> let's. I, I. I think that F one should be setting their sights on racing in Mars. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> some red line shit. Coming yeah. Out. <laughs> So I have some race it, on like some uh, it, 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 some it, neutral ground. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mars, has, Mars GP twenty thirty seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be the first. Once those uh, Norwegian guys get there, yeah, that'll be their first task. But who said to go, to go to Mars first? Oh, There's man. a bunch of people. I thought it was like Elon signed. Musk. Is yeah, yeah, he, he, he's, he's, he's a big. Like, We're going to go there. And he Neil wants Armstrong's to die. Like, no. <laughs> Elon Musk wants to go for real, but there's the uh, a Norwegian sort of. Business idea. They need a few billion dollars. They they had over eighty thousand applications. Maybe more than that, eventually. But oh my god, there's interest to get off this planet for sure. Yeah, a buddy of mine actually, <laughs> he sent in. A, yeah, a buddy of mine sent in an application. They wanted a video from you. They had somewhere close to a hundred thousand. It's narrowed down to about four hundred people. Oh I think god. they're gonna choose eight to begin with, but they are going there and they are not coming back. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. And they want to. Basically, pay for this whole thing by doing a reality series about it, putting it on TV. That's how they want to. Oh. Like the training starts yeah. soon in the desert when they choose people. Like you have to go live in the desert in basically the same habitat you'd be on Mars for a couple of years before you go to Mars. Yeah, oh for lots God. of reasons that you can. You, can you have to really like the people you're with. Yeah, well, you that's, a, like that's the, the thing. You're that's with. You gotta like living in the bubble. You gotta like growing all your own food and taking care of that every day never going outside oh man wait is, it, is, is mars is that is mars that hostile 
in terms oh. of uh, yeah, you can't go outside. I, I think I think any planet other than Earth is pretty hostile for a human. We, we went to the yeah. moon. I mean, that <laughs> doesn't even have it's an not atmosphere. Even a, yeah, it's not even a planet. But yeah, there's no planet. atmosphere. You yeah, gotta but wear it's a still crazy pretty. Suit. Yeah, I mean, there is atmosphere on Mars. Is there not? Yeah. Yeah. On I'm Mars, sure there yeah, there is. I'm sure it's not oxygen. That, but yeah, well, you, you wear a space suit, obviously, but. Yeah, you're gonna have to go outside sometime. It gets really cold. If at we night. could be in the vacuum of space, I'm pretty sure we can fucking. It gets like North Pole cold at night though, like near the equator. Yeah, but I mean, <coughs> shit, <laughs> it's not that cold. The n- North Pole. That's, it was colder in Toronto than the, no- than the saw North Pole. Oh, you saw that, that picture. I saw it. <laughs> North Pole, get out of here. <laughs> get out. <here. laughs> Um, wait, wh- wh- where are we talking about F1? Sorry, isn't that, isn't that what this is? We're talking about the space racing and... <laughs> the Mars GP. The Mars GP. <laughs> Pay attention. Oh, we should totally make like a, uh, like a logo for that. Mars the Grand Prix. <laughs> Mars Grand Prix. <laughs> so yeah, basically all this shit to conclude that we've been talking about for the last two weeks about awesome new rules, thousand horsepower, fat tires, mm. awesome mm. aerodynamics. Not happening. It's not happening. Not gonna happen. It's at least, they're saying, possibly 2017. So probably not. Hmm. And why is that? Well, we, we, we're, we're and this, this goes back to something that I that I talked about uh, a few podcasts ago, very, very early on. And it has to do with the with the F1 strategy group and and and, yeah. and, and, and the power players of F1. Um, and, and I just want to take some time to uh, to talk about that in detail. So, uh, yeah, Mike, if you want to load that up for me, please. I will load it for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So what we're looking at... He, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Hold on. Yeah, hang on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at the, the F1 strategy group. It, it, it's zoom that out a little bit. No, I will chill. Chill, 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 chill. Chill, oh, okay. chill, 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 chill. Anyway, so whatever you you get the gist out of here. So so the F one strategy group was was put together uh, not too long ago at the beginning of uh, of last year, I think, um, to to deal with the growing demands of making changes to F one okay. and making changes um, occur in a streamlined fashion. Let's oh, say shit. Um, and, and 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 the F1 strategy group. The thing is that it, it was formed as a as a good idea, I suppose, uh, first. But um, basically, right now, what we have is three interest groups that hold the the, the voting power in the F1 strategy, group. and that, and and that that's what we see here. Right. Um, so the F1 strategy group is basically. Composed of three things, of, of, of yeah, of, of three segments here that have that hold equal power. So on one end, we have the commercial rights rights holder, right here. This guy. Uh, re- well, represented by the Formula One management, who is basically Bernie Ecclestone. Um, FIA, the the, the France-based Fédération Internationale de l'Automobile. Or whatever, so the International Federations of of Automobiles, and they are the rule makers of F one, the ones mm. that, and the ones that actually own the rights to, to to for anything to be called Formula One. Um, and then the teams, so so there's uh, okay right, and each one of those Formula segments one, Formula One Teams Association. Oh, this I put I put that logo there, uh, but that that this association doesn't exist uh, anymore. Okay. FOTA, uh, the Formula One Teams Association, it existed prior to the to the F1 strategy group, and it basically was a, a, an association of F1 teams, and they and each one of them had had like a very democratic like each team got a vote, but then they couldn't agree on anything because it turns out that the better teams. And the teams with a lot of money were being outnumbered in votes by teams that were sort of, you know, midway and down. Obviously, as it would happen, because you can only have so many winners, right? right? Like, so if a team is doing like very success, it is very successful one year, they're definitely going to have like different interests than a team that's at the bottom of the pile. So FOTA did not work because they couldn't agree on, on anything at all. Right. So to replace FOTA and to and, and to fill the gap. They thought of this, of this whole thing, of the F1 strategy group, composed Holy not just really not working. Yeah, either. well, composed of not just teams, but uh, you know, an associate, uh, a group of teams 
the FIA and the and and the commercial rights holder, the Formula One management. Um, and, and, and it's very interesting. And I wanted to just take some time to 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 go through the power players in each one of these uh, of these segments because what's going to happen and what, what we're going to hear this entire year and next year is mm-hmm. that these names are going to come up over and over and over again because the way that yeah. the sport is going to go, the way that the if F1 has a future, it is gonna dis- uh, it's gonna, it's gonna rely heavily on on these big power players making decisions for everything else. Um, so let's start. Yeah, I think you can go and <coughs> that really didn't do much. But basically, I wanted to like go and talk about FOM. So FOM, we know we know we all know him. We, we we've been talking about him for, <laughs> for as long as he's been on top. So Bernie Ecclestone, he's the CEO of Formula One Management, among other things. Um, From a distance, he looks like Skeletor. He he is he does have that does Mumra he, kind of something. appearance to him. <laughs> <laughs> he's in his eighties. FOM like, CEO, among many other things, depending who you are. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people don't like this guy. Oh, really? Yeah, people call you know that he. What is your opinion on him? The F one supremo, the, the 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 supremo. The, yeah, the supremo, the the ringmaster. You know what? Okay, he's got he's, a lot of powerful friends. Yeah, uh, okay. He's if anything you can you can say about Bernie Ecclestone is that he is a negotiator. He's mm. he's a he's a okay. he's a yeah. he's a negotiator extraordinaire. Okay. And at the begin cuz the the reason why he got this high of position of power is at one point they were trying the, the teams were trying to get together uh, and basically like n- like deal with the right holders of of the TV transmissions and and okay. and, and and they were they were going to try to get together and talk to them and like try to get some better terms but he was chief like he was the chief of like the the commission of the teams and he basically like convinced all the teams and this was back in the 70s he's like don't worry don't worry you know you know how I'm better at negotiating than you guys are don't worry like I'll make let me talk to them I'll work out a good deal mm. for all of us mm. <laughs> So then he went on this separate meeting, um, and he negotiated. He, he basically didn't negotiate on behalf of the teams in general, but just out of himself. And he bought he bought the commercial rights to Formula One, like basically wholesale as one package. He was like, "Don't worry, just give it to me." But one hundred yeah. million or something. I think that they they, they asked for or something or a hundred grand, whatever it was. He paid for it. He and then he got. All like uh, all of the commercial rights. Then he t- and then he went back to the rest of the teams and he was like, "Okay, guys, I actually went and bought the commercial rights to Formula One. If you wanna, if you wanna jump in, like, if you wanna, holy yeah, shit, you know, yeah. no, but I mean, he, he tried to play it off. He was like, if you wanna jump in and 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 come in and like you know split he, like you know do, do something else, you can buy a chunk of it from me at this exorbitant amount of money. And the teams were basically put in a position where. No, actually, with that amount of money, we we actually need it to make the cars for next year. Yeah. So they were basically like, you know what? You keep them for now. We'll we'll figure it out later. But oh, this guy's <laughs> and greasy. Yeah, he's Slippery. worth a lot of money. Well, well yeah, he's right in now. the tens of billions now. Yeah, it, it, oh. to his name personally. Yeah. yeah. So, but Not but for F1. but but basically, like he he, he well, one quote that I think it was Eddie Irvine. He he, he basically Eddie Irvine was a, a driver from uh, Ireland. I think he he was very outspoken. He said that he what he basically did was steal Formula One rights, uh, commercial rights from under the noses of all the teams. But. But I mean that that is just something that some guy says is not my opinion. Some people actually uh, he has managed to stay in power since you know since it's been about forty years yeah. since the seventies and whatever um, because he's consistently managed to still make it appealing for the team. So he 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 has this saying Somehow. apparently that he has this saying that. He, 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 he he basically goes up to you and 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 if you're Smooshes. well if if, if you're Smooshes. like a, a a team manager or yeah. like if you if, if you're in a Formula One and like your your team is doing well you yeah. the thing is that you go talk to Bernie and if you make a convincing argument he can he, he'll tell you I'll take care of you no worry I'll take care oh. <laughs> I'll take oh. care I'll take care of you <laughs> I'll take care of you yeah, I'll but, take care of you but <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. he's he's got that that that, that kind of a mentality. Um, Anything that's for any controversy that's in Formula One eventually like gets and and even and even this man like he so 
we're talking about a committee, right? This F1 strategy group that's yeah. supposed to be split three ways. The teams get six votes. The FIA gets six votes. And he gets six votes. Right. So, like... <laughs> what? We're, we're, yeah. We're, we're, oh, wait. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's like, I'm, I get six votes. Yeah. I'm the best. Yeah, exactly. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and so, 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 sorry, there's two of these guys here? Well, yeah. yeah I, I put, okay. yeah, I put two, two guys that will probably like keep coming up and up um, for the remaining of the Formula One season. Uh, Jean Todd, uh up there, he's the FIA president. Okay. He is um, what I would call a no good politician. Okay. <laughs> Spineless bastard. <laughs> look, look at him rubbing his hands together. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, I'm going to screw them over. <laughs> <laughs> just just quickly here. Uh, Forbes calls Ecclestone's net worth at 3.9 billion US dollars. Oh, man. So, anyway. It's a, it's a billions. Um,. Jean Todt is the, the the president of the FIA. Obviously, well, if you, if you look into it, the uh, the role of the president of the FIA is actually a volunteer position. So you don't get it. You don't get any money. Like you don't. You're not part of the payroll for the FIA. But right. you're getting like kickbacks and all kinds of things left, sure. right, and center. Like Rolex yeah. is obviously gonna like send you a watch that's worth like more than a house and things like that. Like oh. there's benefits. He can he can use the oh. the FIA like the the FIA planes. The FIA is. You know, it, it's, it's not like he's grin. Yeah, I, he's getting he's getting paid at the end. It, it, you know, in backroom deals and stuff yeah, like that, sure. he's getting he's getting prostitutes. Paid. <laughs> prostitutes, <laughs> probably. Prostitutes. Man. Yeah. Well, so that's yeah. That that's Jean Todd. The th thing that's interesting about Jean Todd mm -hmm. is that to, yeah, to me, like I said, he's just a he's just a politician. He before being FIA president, he, he was running Ferrari. So he actually, he actually, oh, he fuck. basically, he, okay. he, he basically graduated from being the, tre the team principal of, uh, by and large, the biggest F1 team in terms of fan, fans and revenue and whatever. Right. Uh, straight to the top position in the FIA. He's, he probably is, let's be honest, he probably just does what Bernie tells him to do sure, at yeah. the end of the day. Sure, and these guys are all buddies. Oh, yeah. They're all friends. Oh, yeah. They, they've been, oh. yeah, they've been in F1, and they've been, like, cahooting since the 70s. Um, <laughs> to balance him out, I think one one person that... Like Charlie Whiting, I think, is a good guy. Yeah, Charlie okay, Whiting. The way you legit. sort of presented this, like, it makes me feel like these guys are not okay. cool. Let, let, this guy's let me, like, let me oh, I'd have a beer with let, him. Let, let, let me say one thing. Yeah. Crook... Yeah, <laughs> crook, stand up guy. Is he really? Yeah, is he stand up? Yeah, yeah, guy? yeah, yeah. He's the, oh, yeah, man. He, he seems to have his, his. Even though he still gets along with with these two, uh, yeah, he he, he 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 does have a level head. It's and like a, he, it's like a Jedi amongst the room of Sith. <laughs> it's just like just know your place. He's One the, day I will rise. <laughs> oh, he's the race director, which I think is a is a job that requires a bit of compassion. Okay, he's got to be paying attention the whole race. Yeah. He gets the call when the flags get waved he gets yeah. this oh flag. shit i see he flashes oh, yeah. the red lights that start the race okay if there was a thing as a, a, job. As a, as a main car in and out if there was a, like such a position as like a main referee of yeah. f1 that's him oh okay yeah he, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's the main ref of f1 he he's actually the one that like presses a button where that like shuts off the lights which means that the race can start like, stuff like that like he's like he's yeah he's right <laughs> it's like the announcer at a boxing he's fight <laughs> <laughs> he's up in that box over the checkered Flag, oh, okay. Over the finish okay. line. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, or observing everything, but he—he's he, actually a very down-to-earth guy, and uh, and and he he just just from from hearing some of his, what he has to say in some of his interviews, he really does want the best for the sport, and he loves the sport. Mm -hmm. He he he, yeah. he loves the sport, and I actually think that intrinsically, at the end of the day, and and maybe that's why these people ha are still there and are still like. They, they still matter is because they're all at the end racers and they actually like F1. They actually, yeah. they don't, it's, it's not in their ultimate interest to, for F1 to flop. Uh, number one. And number two is just, they actually like the sport in their own twisted way. Right. <laughs> you know, what's funny about this, this little, this little trio here. Yeah. Uh, is that I feel like <laughs> these guys, kids, their kids, <laughs> if they had kids, yeah. bunch of twats. <laughs> 
know what I mean? Oh my, he, I don't even know them. I don't even know them. But yeah, I, he's, I he's, got, he's got two daughters, but don't, don't, let's not even get into that. Okay. And then like, I'm pretty sure this guy has like Sunday barbecues like, with his family. He's <laughs> just like, oh, what you guys do this for? You know, like, what, how's it going? You know, stand up guy. All right. Yeah. All right. Next. Uh, uh, so, th- yeah, the third component. So, yeah. So this, this organization, this yeah. international organization gets six votes. He gets six votes. And then the, the basically the part of the teams that replace the old coat, uh, the old FOTA, um, go one more, is this, is okay. six Formula One teams. I, I'm sorry, I made the text too small there, but basically I'm, I'm going to read it. What it says, it says, it's okay. It says a group of representatives from six strategically important teams. Five of them are permanent members right. and the other one is the highest scoring team other than the five, from the rest of the field. Oh, okay. Each, yeah, each team has one vote in these decisions. The thing right now, though, and when what we've been saying that maybe these changes won't happen until 2017 and whatever, is because up until now or up until 20, the end of 2016, any decision that the Formula One strategy group uh, gets to pass over to the F1 commission for ratification um, is or has to be a unanimous vote. It has to be so. Each, not only do they have veto power, but each team has veto power over anything that happens. The, oh, yeah, on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and and it's, so one thing that they've managed to do is change that, but only effective in t- uh, for 2017 or 2016. Sorry, yeah. Uh, only uh, only in 2016. This is gonna change, and now it's and it's gonna be a simple majority, which actually makes more sense. A lot mm-hmm. more sense. Yeah. yeah. Like there was that whole thing about uh, Manor Marusha wanting to come back, right? And I think the first, the first voter that was asked was Force India, and they said, kind of, uh, no, we don't think so. So right there, no, uh, nobody else in the rest of those seventeen votes has to say anything because Force yeah. India already said, we don't. Uh, so everybody says, "All right, there's, there's your answer." <laughs> so basically, one team made the decision that Manor wasn't coming back, which I believe somehow they worked it out and they are coming back. They've paid their fee. They're coming back mm-hmm. as men. well. They can they, they can come back if they have a if they have a car ready by. Yeah, I don't think they Barcelona. know how they're coming back yet. They sold their or, factory or already. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So anyway. so the, the the teams that are strategically important and are permanent members, you can see them there. They're the first uh, five from left to right. Scuderia Ferrari, Ferrari, uh, Red Bull, who is actually there. There is something out of out of this first five teams. Red Bull to me sting, sticks out because they're a relatively new team to the sport, um, and I guess Mercedes too. But anyway, Red Bull is there because they had they have been they very came successful. in and dominated yeah, for four years. They were very successful. Oh for really? A while. <laughs> Four yeah. consecutive world championships for Sebastian Vettel. Yeah, Jesus. With Red Bull, yeah, but they, they started from like a very small operation, and they built the team up to like I guess now wielding enough power to be included as the you know the permanent member. Sorry, now what? How, how do you get to be a permanent member? They decided. They, just, they they're they, like yeah. no, these they, guys, these yeah. guys, these guys. They they sat down in a number of meetings that some people actually call the Piranha Club. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. The, Holy. Yeah. yeah. Some people call like, this like the Piranha Club. Yeah. Echo Stones. He. I think at every track he has control over the VIP areas for his catering and whatever he wants in there because oh, he's a billionaire. Yeah. And and he. <laughs> yeah, they, they, so they 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 get they get together in these meetings that apparently like go overnight and there's Schmooze all kinds and, of stuff. And yeah. Like, sure. Yeah. yeah. Hookers is flowing. Oh, the, yeah. Is, everything. Yeah. Hoverboards. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Cover so, cheese boards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they decided that <laughs> the, these these first five are basically the big teams in F1 right now. Um, anyway, so we were Red Bull Racing, McLaren Honda this year. Uh, they're Honda. Uh, Mercedes, obviously the the, the the world champions, and they are gonna. They, they, the they, giant. They, pe- this to me tells me though. As, yeah, they have a huge petro- petroleum sponsor. This to me tells tells me that even though the rumors have been flying that Mercedes might leave the sport after these big changes, no, I think Mercedes is there to stay. Um, Patronus, yeah, isn't that a um, uh, Harry Potter w- uh, wizard spell? <laughs> I'm pretty sure something Patronus <laughs> something is. Something Patronus. Yeah, yeah something yeah. Patronus. He turns him into like a piece or of fucking wood. I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I, I wasn't that into Harry Potter. To be Never honest. seen. The I was movies. sick for five days one uh, last year, and I watched all of them. <laughs> one day, one day I'll check them out. I haven't seen them yet. They're actually they're, quite entertaining. They're a giant oil company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is a um, an oil company from Malaysia. Okay, yeah. is it the uh, Taipei One Hundred One? Is their their office building? No, no, it's uh, the, the, the the Petronas Towers. The Petronas Towers. Towers. Oh, the the Petronas Towers. Oh, what's it? No, whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, giant ass twin buildings. Williams Martini Racing. That is, um, it was a team that started sponsored by drinking and driving. Yeah, sponsored <laughs> by drinking and driving. It's a historical <laughs> partnership. They, oh my god! They just got their martini sponsorship back. Yeah. Actually. Oh really? Last yeah. year, yeah. yeah. Wait, is it like martini, like the drink, or like the brand? Well, the, yeah, the, 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 they make vermouth mostly. I think yeah, they're known okay. by, like Martini Rosso. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Williams Williams actually started as a small team uh, b- uh, w- way back though, and now they're 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 a team that has had historically uh, in the time that they've been into, into F one, you know, at the end of the seventies, early eighties, like into the nineties, they they w- they had a lot of like crucial victories, and 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 they were the team uh, that Senna last race for mm. the big, the great Senna. Frank Williams was also a really good businessman. He was, uh, he started off, he was a mechanic. He had his own, whatever, started yeah. his team. Yeah. He started off like as a grease monkey and he made some deals that worked out. Now Damn. his daughter runs a team. He's, yeah. He still shows up at every race. He's, uh, well, at he's, some races. Yeah. He's in a wheelchair now. He's a really old guy, but now oh, his shit. daughter's taking over the team. Well, right. and, 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 a, and we, and we go through that next. Tough team. Uh, well, actually, and, and Claire, the, Claire the last is Sahara Force India. So yeah, that that last spot is occupied by uh, basically the the, the the team that they were the team out of the rest of the field. They were the team that scored highest last year, and that's why they get right. To and now, are these guys generally? In the highest, I'm, I'm assuming they are the highest. Some years they are, some, some years, years they are. Williams, Williams made a big yeah. comeback last year. Mc, made a McLaren, for the past few years, actually, they haven't been making been like, too struggling. many news. Okay. But just because they are... Um, they, they How just, long they've been there? Historically it's, significant, right, okay. they still wield some power. Okay. Move to the next slide. And plus Honda as well. I don't know. That they were in there yeah. before Honda. Okay. But. So there we go. Now, now there here's here's the teams broken down. Oh wow, this is fantastic! <laughs> yeah, you've created like a whole little thing for me to understand uh, how the sport works. Exactly. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. great. Well, <laughs> everyone, don't be so selfish. <laughs> ah, this is where I listen. Well, I'm a douche. Yeah. <laughs> well, but also, it, it is important to know this because as much as some, especially like me, like when I when I started watching F1, I I didn't really care or, or wanted to care that much about the politics of it. But right. you, you find that just just following F1. If if you if you if you want to be really interested in F1, this stuff is gonna come up. So you right. you may as well yeah. be aware of what's going on. Totally it reminds <laughs> me of like Game of Thrones or some yeah, shit. Oh, there you is I mean? it is a true like true to life Game of Thrones yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so clockwise, I'm gonna start with Sahara Force India. It's a team that yes, they have been successful and they have a strong driver lineup. As much as I don't like Sergio Perez. Um, <laughs> but with with Hulkenberg, they have a strong driver lineup. They are probably yeah. going to be in an, in the mix because they have an, uh, a Mercedes engine. They managed to secure that. Um, but it's a team that some say is probably in trouble. Mm. Uh, and and yeah. the team principal they didn't show up for at Jerez <coughs> for yeah. testing. Yeah, yeah for the first testing, they're, yeah they're the ones that didn't show up due to te- like what was it like a uh, performance or no efficiency issues, but really but, the story is that yeah they were well they were in Mexico the week before for the unveiling of their car because <laughs> their number one driver is from Mexico, and they were while they were there they were trying to sell the seat for Jerez mm, yeah. to make money like basically not even giving their two drivers who they're paying or I guess they're not paying them <laughs> they're paying to drive. But not even not giving their drivers a chance to test the car. They're trying to sell that seat at the first practice of the year. That's how much trouble they're in, right? Yeah. Now. Oh, Jesus. If you want to compete, you want your drivers in the car as much yeah. as possible, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. So the, the the rumor is that they're in, in trouble financially, and and that that stems from yeah number one oh, over here. Can we look this guy yeah, yeah, yeah. VJ Malia, like I VJ put over Mohawk there. Malia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's uh, like it says over there. VJ Malia, former billionaire. <laughs> the king. <laughs> The King Fisher, 2008 hit this guy hard. He's a former. 
Yeah, 2008 hit this guy hard. That was yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, he, he joined F1 in, 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 you know, in times when, when his companies were all doing a lot better. <laughs> now now he's, he, he's involved with a lot of scandals in India. Mm. Uh, he doesn't have his... He, he, he's not worth a billion dollars anymore or more. He's, he's, I, it's, I, think, I, I think he's at seven to 50 million. I mean, still decent, but is it F, F1 territory? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so he, he, he's, he's a controversial figure figure with uh lots to say he he does have i think he he does have the, 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 the he, he's a big player in the sport still um because of the parties he hosts and he like through right through hosting parties and stuff he's, right. he's gotten to know and i think he's gotten to to be around um a, a, a yeah. lot of the, the rest of the players mm-hmm. uh so he still wields some influence in f1 we talked about last week he's, he's famous in monaco for throwing his uh like 300 men dance floor party on his yacht yeah he's like a, oh yeah that's like right a, seven, yeah. He's a, a dance floor that's three stories tall with an opening roof on his on his boat yeah <laughs> is that Fuck. that type of baller yeah that is yes that oh, is uh, or, or used to but anyway through that he got he got some power he's still he's still in f1 um it, people want him to stay in f1 too because you eventually you you want you want to stay true to like What's going on in the world? And India right now is one of the big power players globally. Yeah, they got so a billion people. Yeah, you want you want India to have a presence in Formula One as much mm-hmm. as you want you want China to be to right. be in Formula One. So so it's good that they're there. Um, yeah, for sure. His his number one, <laughs> number one, <laughs> is Bob Fernley, deputy team principal. Now he's already made some headlines because of what Danny was talking about earlier. This is the dude who let it slip that Force India didn't really want men are coming back. Oh really? Well, but he yeah. he had his reasons, but still, like when the vote sure, when, when this vote came to play, they basically told him like, "All right, your your vote first. Like, who like do you think that they should come? Yes or no?" And just because he said no, then, but you know what it's, I mean? It's like it's got to be unanimous, mm-hmm. and they don't even do a silent vote. Yeah. So. Oh shit! Just like ah, oh, you you go first. Yeah. And everyone's like, <laughs> you go first. Yeah. So as soon as some obviously as soon as somebody says no, like they because yeah. it has to be unanimous, everybody goes like, okay, well no, then then no, <laughs> then no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, Williams Martini Racing, yes. chaired by Claire Williams, who I still. Mm, uh, Claire Williams. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, is there a secret crush? <clears throat> Claire, Claire well, Williams. Not, 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 it's not even secret. It. It's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a straight up crush. It's a tough chick. She, oh. Yeah. I, 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 I love for her to tell me exactly what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, Please direct me, deputy team principal. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she's. Uh, it's. It's yeah, much. Yeah, she, she's a tough chick. Uh, it's a tough check. She can. She knows. She knows how to defend herself from like the cameras and the. Just, yeah. just look. Just, just knows how to deal. Well, deal yeah. and deal. See, seeing her like in interviews, it, it can be pretty funny because she can. Okay. She can be pretty hilarious, but still like drop hints here and there. Yeah. She's cool. She. She seems to have her right. Uh, her head in the right place as to where things are going. Um, I wasn't sure at first, but yeah, she's a badass. Yeah. I think she was probably just nervous at first. <laughs> True. Oh, shit. Now I'm running a couple hundred million dollars. <laughs> she came out of nowhere. Yeah. But well, she's not really out of nowhere. She's been around like since his dad. Like, her dad has been around, I guess. So yeah. her, her dad so basically started the it. team. The team yeah. is called Williams. Like, you know, that that's his daughter. Uh, it's very, very much a family affair there. So I mean, good good for them. Good that they managed to secure that position of power there. Yeah. Her, their vote, their vote counts. Their vote matters. And she was vocal in saying that uh, she was one of the ones that voted yes for Marusha. <laughs> but that that that's kind of like it's a pointless argument to, to make it because right back to politics. Yeah, because even the, even if she had voted yes or no, it didn't matter because by that point Bob Fernley had already voted no. So whatever her vote was didn't count. Didn't even matter. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, the decisions are going to be made uh, coming out of this F1 strategy commission, and she's going to be one of the power players there. Uh, and I like her to be there. She's good. Frank Williams also like they've they've they, this, this guy's is, got a nice smile. Yeah. Well, this this also is, a family man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And this is, uh, this is one of the teams that is there to race. Right. They they, they they're yeah. a purebred racing team. They don't have like not I mean, selling cars and not selling soda cans. They, they, oh shit! They, they're there to yeah. If if anything, the like they, they they have this technology arm that 
um, uses solutions that they've learned with F1 to like, and they, they sell it to to things. But their projects are mostly like really benign, really like I think wow, one of the one of the their pieces of software that they created to like take to take track of the telemetry yeah. uh, of the cars. Like yeah. the, these cars, when they're on track and when they're testing, they're producing huge amounts of data and like so whatever. Of One of the pieces of software that they developed, um, they're actually using it across the UK now in hospitals to monitor the uh, the vital signs of like all their patients and stuff. And like so, you know what I mean? Like they, oh, crazy! But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not their core business. Their core business is racing. Yeah. So mm. so that's cool that they're there. And so, something with that team that. I don't think a lot of big news got made out of it, but I think it gave them a big boost last year. I don't actually know all the details, but about um, them partnering with some Russian technology firm, which has helped them out with aerodynamics. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember the name or the details. We'll, we'll talk about it another time. Mm -hmm. We'll look into it. But they, they came up and uh, destroyed a lot of competition last year out of nowhere, unexpectedly, Yeah, which is pretty great. Well, they, and they have the right engine too, so they they are definitely going to be yeah. in the mix this year in terms of uh, winning races. Uh, which brings us to Mercedes AMG Petronas mm. Formula One team. Uh, Mercedes is a relatively new entrant uh, to F1, um, but they they came when when it was announced that F1 as as of last year was going to move to the new engine formula, and and the, the engines were going to be these uh, hybrids with the you know the, with the turbo bits like bolted <laughs> the on green yeah yeah, yeah the yeah. green stuff. Yeah. Uh, but they figured, and they, as soon as that became a real thing, they got interested into F1 again. Um, they decided to come back, and they decided to come back and form. And they said, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna like work really hard in a very German fashion, very yeah. precise, very you know <laughs> by the book by the very by the book to become. To, 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 to be uh, the be to, to develop the best engine, and they did, and they did, they, they did Shit. by also, by far. Also, last the best year. accent. <laughs> also, the best accent. So yeah. Total Wolf. Who, who do they have? Yeah, right. <laughs> who are the power players Nikki here? Nicky Lauda. Yeah. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah. You know who that is? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I sure do. <laughs> he raced against Thor. <laughs> 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 Gets me every time. Yeah, yeah Nicky Lauda is there. He's a non-executive chairman, but uh, rumors are are that he's yeah, actually he going to be. Yeah, he, he's going to be an executive chairman uh, beginning this year. Um, he talks on camera a lot for the team. Yeah, uh, okay. He, he's, he's, he's a lot of PR for them. He's okay. good PR, and he's also like he's, he's he calls it like he sees it. And, okay, and that's one thing I think that actually they, they both share in common. They're they're kind of they're they're two no nonsense guys, uh, mm. and and Toto actually he's. He's a racer. Like he used to race, like he uh, single seaters and DTM, I think, at one point. Um, but then he's also a businessman, and just his knowledge and his his love for the sport got him that position that he's at. He's he's, he's the, where he's one of the big power players at Mercedes, and Mercedes trust him. And clearly, they've made a right decision because he's still there. And uh, I I like them both to be there yeah. because <clears throat> they don't they're not playing politics. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, yeah, they're not. Even when their game is, uh, even when their prime well, directive is like, you know, let's make some profit. And the moment that they're fucking destroying everybody, so they don't need to play any politics. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, I, maybe inter team though. Toto Wolf yeah. was really good last year, which with something that I'm sure is going to be a big problem again this what? year. What is that? Hamilton and <laughs> Rosberg keeping their drivers in like, fighting. Like, psh, psh. Uh, <laughs> these two guys. These two guys. They're two drivers. Hamilton. Oh right. They they just got. Um, that guy, right? We talked about it uh, two two podcasts ago, and they signed him. They're th they're, oh, they're they, trying they, to resign Hamilton before the next season. Oh, okay. I see. The thing okay. is, they're, they're two drivers. Basically, grew up in it together all Ra the way from karting each other. from the when they're like 13, 12 years old. No they're, they've been buddies. Yeah. Well, they, they got into. Uh, they uh -oh. weren't talking for a few oh, periods. Oh, friendship they're, breakup. They're, 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 uh oh. They're two. Undereducated guys. Actually, I wouldn't say that about. Nico. I wouldn't say yeah. for either of them, really. Actually, yeah, really. But I mean, seems like you have to be. Nico Rosberg speaks like I think five languages. Yeah. Oh no, that's. Yeah, he's I barely, I barely speak like one. Completely <laughs> fluently. Yeah. He's like German, Italian, Spanish, English. Oh, that, sure. that doesn't count. It's all from the same continent. <laughs> speaks them all. I'm just kidding. No, but, but these two guys French. are fighting a lot, and it was Toto Wolf who had to fucking step between them all the time yeah. <laughs> when they weren't talking. Yeah. Hamilton was more like, "Oh, we're still friends," and Rosberg was like, "I don't know. I don't know." He beat me last weekend. How much? <laughs> <I say? laughs> so, I yeah, I I like them too, though. And yeah, 
keeping keeping the inter team tri- rivalry like they they've managed to do that and they've managed to to do that like uh, in a pretty matter of factly uh, situation at, at least from their interviews you can tell they're very like you know we sat them down we told them listen grow up yeah, then, yeah listen yeah. grow the fuck up all right <laughs> yeah we're like, adults <laughs> at the same time though I got the German background love these guys loud as a legend I love Hamilton he's yeah. a two time champion now yeah but. It's hard to cheer for them because there's no competition. Yeah, mm. exactly. Like, Which, whatever. It's hard to be... I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It's hard. As, as far as just being otherwise... Yeah, I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like them, but I don't. Let me tell you somebody that I don't like intrinsically is uh is is this guy it's the group ceo of mclaren ron dennis ron dennis, ron dennis is mm. was a pretty big i don't trust his hairline yeah exactly mm. <laughs> feels like it absorbs too much sunlight <laughs> another one of these weasley Fuels guys. His hatred yeah he's, he's he's a bit of a weasley guy he's okay. he, he's he's pretty but he, he brought um a culture of like very uh um like met- millimetrical success to to uh, uh, to uh, McLaren, it's like so, uh, like winning on stipulation. No, no, just 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 ve- being very precise and and, and the, the 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 rumor is is that if you work for McLaren, whenever you like, if you're at your desk yeah. at work, and Ron Dennis enters like the room, like you like you have like you get all paranoid because like your all your pencils and like your pens have to be like a specific way all lined up oh, and there, there okay. can be no clutter they can, so he's, <laughs> he's 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 a massive like you know he, he's he's got that OCD complex and he and he expanded that through his, his entire operation at McLaren um and he was backed up by the amount of success that he had um with uh, with Senna when when Senna won his championships he did it on a mclaren car and ron dennis was like was just starting i think back then uh to be to to, to run mclaren as a wear and since then he's he's had you know he he, he had another victory with lewis hamilton yeah. when he brought lewis hamilton into the sport yeah. uh and basically nursed him from when he was so when he was a little kid so a lot of people look up to ron dennis because he he, he was able to turn mclaren around and 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 make mclaren uh i think in terms of percentages of mm-hmm. the amount of races that they've taken part in um, versus how, like how many of those races they've won, right. they have the highest percentage of wins. Okay. Of like so that's that's one of their stats, and 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 they owe a lot of that to to Ron. But if you look if you look at uh, if you watch some interviews of him, he has <laughs> what some people have actually called Ron speak. <laughs> where he, where you ask, where he, you ask him a question, and he kind of, he kind of tries to answer, but he uses like his answers are so verbose, so like he just he, he talks about like too much like technical stuff that you don't know if he actually answered the question or yeah. like you're not you're, you're not kind of you know better what he said yeah you know you know better off yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and he's he's sneaky like that just mm. so just 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 look at him talk like sometimes like I you know when, when I when I'm listening to some of his interviews I'm like okay like, just just Wait. talk like a normal person yeah. like, Ron like <laughs> come on Ron yeah tell me the truth come on <laughs> so yeah you can never know like what's in his mind or what his what his what his plans are what he's what he's meddling with um so that's it <laughs> that alone is the reason why we're gonna be paying a lot of attention to what his moves are this year the one right. thing i wonder about this guy is you be uh, going on what you just said about him mm-hmm. you look at that i don't know when that picture's from but he looks like he's really skinny <laughs> right and if you look at say uh hamilton worked for him yeah started off really skinny he started <laughs> if you look he's one of the bigger guys yeah we were talking actually talking about this before <laughs> before the show about if you dropped all every driver into the ufc cage who would exit <laughs> okay but you look so you look at hamilton he became one of the more athletic drivers you look mm-hmm. at button he button is, is he is the most athletic driver he's yeah, he rides in uh marathons well, he does triathlons, triathlons and oh shit that's yeah. crazy he does that kind of training where you got like the oxygen tube in your mouth and you're just holy pumping away. fuck that's scary and, yeah no, and like you wonder if that athlete. comes from him and then if you look at at the same time uh, alonso he's one of the more athletic guys as well yeah maybe not as hardcore as you would think button, but you can like, tell he goes to the, people who play professional starcraft are like on like these strict 
physical regiments, <laughs> body, mind, soul, like training. Right. You would think people who drive things like hundreds of kilometers an hour would have the like they would be training physically every day. Some of them are. Yeah, some a of, lot of them are. A just, lot of them are, but like, shouldn't it have been like all of them? Well, I mean, yeah, but it, 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 it <laughs> but that that's, that separates the fucking strong from the weak. Exactly, yeah, exactly. and 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 that's it, a lot of the times that's, that's like your 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 management philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you're a team manager and if you if you don't think that fitness is all the all like all that high up there, right? Then you probably wouldn't pay for you know the gym hours and the, the physio and whatever they need to have. To, like, right. I don't think they're worried right. about the the money, but the time going to there. Uh, I just, I just maybe, wonder. Yeah, that makes sense. I just wonder with those three guys specifically. Specifically, if it has anything to do with him. With him. But if you look at him, he's uh, skinny, right? He's he's yeah. obviously not going to the gym. Oh, he he likes his pen straight, maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So it's him again. So so we have we we have a, a a snake here in Ron Dennis, and and I think balanced quite well by these two, Eric Bouillet, Bouillet, Bouillet. I don't know how. Bouillet. Bouillet. Bouillet? Bouillet? I think it's Bouillet. 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 Anyway. <laughs> He's, he's Booyah. French. Booyah. Eric Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. And I got to get this right again. Yasuhisha Arai. Um, so the, uh, Eric Bouya is uh, the racing director of McLaren. The one who speaks English? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Yasushita is the racing director that speaks Japanese. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> Eric Bouya is the racing director and Yasuhisha is uh, the Honda motorsport chief. Okay. Like, so so he, was, he was very instrumental um, in bringing Honda back into F1. Okay. Um, so this year, this Arai guy, and and Eric Bouye, he got basically s- stolen from Team Lotus, and he got brought to McLaren after McLaren had a big management crisis. Right. They sacked Martin Whitmarsh, um, yeah. and uh, and and brought this guy because he was he was able Eric Bouye was able to turn around at uh, another team, Team Lotus, and and make it you know pretty successful for a while. Lotus was doing very well when the aero rules and blown yeah. diffusers were working for them. Prior to 2014, they were like they they, they were occupying that that fifth that basically that sixth spot, best of the rest. They were, uh, I think, the only team that was blowing their exhaust forward, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm back yeah. in the blown diffusers thing. <laughs> but, but anyway, he fucking badass. And and their he car had, sounded ridiculous. You can find we don't have to look it up here, but. Look up a uh, audio of that Lotus. The, the, the Lotus was 2013. The, I believe it was 2013. The, the 2013. It might be 2012. 2012. Yeah, I guess so. No, no. Yeah, yeah 20, 2012. Spec. Blown dis- diffusers were gone, but yeah, 2012. I I, I like Eric Bouye because despite being a French guy, <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't seem to want to play the politics game so much. Like when when you when you listen to his his interviews, like he's actually pretty. Uh, what seems like to, he's also very he, straightforward. Yeah, yeah, he comes across as being pretty straightforward, pretty honest. And yeah, so he's right. Like he's, he, you, you can tell that um, th- that his dedication to this F1 project is full, one hundred percent. And mm-hmm. and he has the backing of Honda. Uh, and and they have. He's the one that admitted that they made a mistake by leaving F1. Yeah, they want to. They say they're committed for. It. For Until the end of time. Yeah. Oh my god. To be an F one. Yeah. Until the gravity. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Until the gravity. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I I I think that those two are gonna be a great counterbalance to Ron Dennis's sneakiness, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and they're obviously gonna Yasuhisha Rai from Honda, um, wielding a lot of influence. Uh, Eric Bouillet yeah. from the, the team, and then uh, Ron Dennis from you know the McLaren being McLaren CEO, so he he's going to be another big power player. Uh, next up, we got Red Bull. Red Bull, RBR. Uh, so with Red Bull, we have um, right at the top <laughs> Dietrich Mateschitz. Yeah. He is the owner of Red Bull. Uh, he's a, he's a figure that's mostly in the shadows. Yeah, well, he's uh, the businessman. He's the one that turned Red Bull into a multi-billion-dollar business. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He made that dude, I believe, the richest man in Thailand who invented Red Bull. Uh, yeah, that's tr- yeah. I think he is. He is uh, the, the the richest man in Thailand. I believe he is. Oh, I think he he actually might have died now. The guy, the inventor, the Red Bull inventor. Oh yeah. I think he might have died. He invented that stuff, I think, back in the late '60s, though. Well, yeah, I'd sold it for decades until he met this guy. Yeah. Now he's a billionaire. 
<laughs> All they had to do was add carbonation. Have you ever had one of those, like the little Red Bulls? They sell them at some convenience stores here. No. You can, you can get like, you can basically. Is it like those five hour power types? Yeah, things? they were basically like the original five hour power shots. <laughs> that was that was what Red Bull was. And that's that's how Red Bull, like, how, that's how those Dietrich Matic the, the found Bulls. it. Yeah. Oh, that, okay. when, when it was, uh, the deal was that the, he used to take these trips to Thailand because uh, he was like a salesman of something or other. And every time that he was in Thailand, he like saw this thing like, oh shit, like it, it really works. Oh, <laughs> I bet I can sell this in Europe. Yeah, he was, well, that dude yeah. was making money off them for years in Thailand, selling them to truck drivers and construction workers and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, I guess he added the carbonation, designed the drink can and... Put some put some good looking girls and little minis going around. <laughs> I guess then started sponsoring every extreme sport known to man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Red Bull gives you wings. I, I like Red Bull no, does I, not I, actually I, give you wings. Yeah, not and and especially not if you're uh, uh, what is it Daniel Daniel Kvyat and, and third day of testing. What happened to him? It, remember he broke it, the, the 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 front wing, and right. Red Bull Red Bull didn't have any didn't spare have front <laughs> wing. So in that that is yeah. one documented occurrence when Red Bull indeed does not they give you wings. <laughs> <laughs> we're not ready with those wings no no yeah this dude is the ultimate businessman apparently yeah he's a, he's a pretty good businessman and I, I i you know what i like what he's doing with his billions he's i don't think he he has like a um uh, any any kind of family inclinations or anything like that he's just yeah. with my billions i'm gonna start sponsoring extreme sports because i like string sp extreme sports and you know all, all the good for him they he managed to well he managed to get a team that turned red bull around and turned red bull into a force yeah, to be reckoned with. They sponsor that in Quebec. They do that crash dice event. They oh, that stuff is sweet. Yeah, they sponsor the wingsuit dudes, the, those Dreamline videos on YouTube, the Red Bull Stratos space jump where Felix Baumgartner jumped from space. Somebody from Google broke his record. <laughs> sort of off the record. That wasn't really in the news. Yeah. Everything, man. Yeah. So no. much. Did, do you think, one thing I don't know, did the original Red Bull have that flavor? The, the kind of yellow pineapple-y flavor. I think it does <laughs> in a very concentrated way. My, my old buddy Mike, I loved his description. is pretty apt to me. Metallic strawberries. <laughs> Metallic <laughs> Red Bull. He's like, well, the, the more the smell than the taste, I'd say. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, fucking Red Bull smells like metallic strawberries. <laughs> that was pretty, fairly accurate. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think it did. I think it did. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't actually tried one of those little Red Bulls, but I know that yeah, they yeah, exist, and I know they sell them here. Back in time to Thailand <laughs> to find out. Um, Somebody so, let us know if you know. Yeah, if, if, if yeah. the original recipe. <laughs> uh, who, who, uh, Christian Horner is also uh, a guy that we're going to be hearing over and over uh, from Red Bull. He's. I don't know. How, how do you describe uh, Christian Horner, Danny? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what, he, what his intentions are. I don't know. They, wasn't he like an underwear model at some point? Like everyone tries to get him to sign that photo of him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like, he's, like, he's like half naked sitting on a racing car from some old magazine ad. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's because he was... I don't was, know where he came from, to be honest. He was... Oh, he, I think he was a, a team principal or some sort of an executive oh, um, thanks, of, um, yeah. of a team that used to race um, in lower categories. And that's that's where that picture comes from. But now, okay, okay. now, now he he races. Well, he doesn't race, but he he's uh, the team principal of Red Bull, right. uh, largely responsible for many of their wins or for for assembling a team at least mm. that um, uh, that got him four world championships. I and guess he was like Vettel's advocate. Yeah, coming up, uh, him and Helmut Marko. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So he he's he's gonna make a splash this year, one way or another. I mean, just he's likable. But I find that since Red Bull started losing last year, um, his his reaction to some of the questions of the press have been more like yeah, you know, like more, more double phase. Is. Like, and he, he he seems like maybe it's he's a little started, bitter. Maybe yeah. Well, maybe he started as a as a guy that didn't play the politics game, but. You know the the rest of these dudes broke him, and now he's he's one of them. He's one of them. He's one of <laughs> us. Them. <laughs> uh, Adrian Newey, um, genius. Aerodynamicist extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, the yeah. brains behind the X twenty fourteen we just looked at. Oh, yeah, that okay. crazy car with the cockpit. Twenty XX. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's he's uh, he's 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 
by and large, the the best this or recognized as the best aerodynamicist yeah. in F one. Um, I think altogether in the many teams that he's been, he's won what like two, like over twenty championships. Like his cars have won. So um, he's yeah. he's being very vocal now for what you said. Yeah, as of yesterday, well, we just talked about this earlier about the 2016 to 2017 rules are not happening, and he'd already expressed that he's probably going to be leaving the sport to go do something else that lets his mind work more. Cause he's an old stu- school dude that he still designs with uh, like an easel and a protractor oh, and crazy. a compass and a ruler. Yeah, and he, he, yeah, no AutoCAD. Well, I'm sure he knows AutoCAD, but he draws by he designs by hand. God damn! And uh, yeah, his he's basically his uh, complaint is that F one has become too engine based, especially in the last two or three years. Yeah, but that's and that especially since last year. I keep saying that the thing I don't agree with was that the cars were ugly last year. Mm-hmm. To me, those aesthetics don't matter so much. But to him, it did a little bit. But uh, people were pissed off about the like cock noses on the car, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's this quote from yesterday noses. that. F1's lost its focus. There's no more emphasis really on aerodynamics or really the driver because of all the computer power. His quote is, you can always improve, but the problem is the limitation of the regulations, so much so that the car is designed for you. Like we told Uh, you, like the nose is this year because people were upset about the cock or whatever they wanted to call the thing that last year. They have three spots where you have to meet a certain volume and surface area shape which homologizes them a lot they look they look similar right they should it, all look completely di- like they should all yeah. look like they came one from mars and one from jupiter right whatever, right? right okay so can we go back to who which is who why decides leaving. who what is there a final say on who decides how a car is going to look um well it, in, in a certain way how cars look uh, are by and large um, Based restricted on, on the rules, right? And and this yeah. committee, that this F one strategy group, they're in charge now of putting forth new rules or changes to the rules, right? So that's why it's important. So yes, if uh, the answer to your question would be them, them. they they would them. <clears throat> but throughout this conversation, I'm I've sort of been gathering that it's more or less not these guys. But the other two parties as that well, are involved. exactly. Well, more so than these guys. Well, they, they just hold more votes. Each one of these teams gets only one vote. One vote each, right? Ugh. So, and as soon as one says no to something, it's vetoed. And yeah. then things Ugh. that things that yeah, you, these meetings must be boring as hell. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that they must be talking to each other at some point, right? Well, they they, must, they're talking to each other all the time, all the time. Yeah. In, in like in like that, you know that's what, dark that's what, okay. corners yeah, and whatever. Yeah, sure, but that's what makes me like uh, when you guys are talking about uh, Force India uh, about, about their thing, and they were the first ones to vote. Yeah, the other teams would have known that oh, that's yeah. what they were oh, going to yeah. do. Oh right? yeah, oh for sure. Well, maybe not. Re- I, don't, I don't know. And some sort of backroom dealing. Because these like guys are the the lowest of the top no, six okay. teams. Listen, they're like Manor possibly could. Offer some competition at Force India, right? It makes it more mm-hmm. difficult for them to score points mm-hmm. and win prize money for next year. I don't know. But at the same time, the reason that Force India and all the other teams had to spend crazy money redesigning the cars is because of safety. And Manor wanted to come back with last year's car, which was this deemed not safe enough, which is why they changed the mm-hmm. noses this year and made them have to absorb more G forces. Yeah, it gets really deep. <laughs> and then you go from, if you go back two years ago before the cock noses, the thing that all the aerodynamicists wanted to keep, but which was deemed dangerous because of, which was a Grosjean almost killed Fernando Alonso. Oh, yeah. I believe it was at, um, at Monza. Was that Monza? Uh, no, uh, Belgium. Belgium, Belgium. The first corner is a hairpin. Mm-hmm. And uh, so as Fer- Alonso was on the outside, slowed down and turned. This Grosjean guy basically this didn't slow down enough and went straight over his cockpit. Oh. So up, at, up until that year, the noses, if you're calling this the floor, the noses were about this high, like almost as high as the driver's heads. So for oh, the next wow. year, they dropped them right down and they narrowed them. But that was just for noses. that. Was that in as, response as to as that? If you ask Adrian Newey, it was in response to that because Alonso almost got killed. 
Okay, so, so if you ask Adrian Newey where he'd want the nose, it's as high as possible. Like, as long as you're not blocking the driver's vision, that's how high you want the nose because you want the air going under the car. Right, right. To, to, totally to be able right. to, like, no, 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 that I understand. Okay, but okay, so uh, uh, um, a rule was uh, added to hockey not too long ago, maybe okay. about a year or so ago, and it had to do with um, icing. Okay, so there's a new icing rule. <sighs> like that. So the idea is that if one team has yeah, the puck in in the end and they they throw it over, um, it's not an instant icing, but like if there if there's a race mm-hmm. to, to to get that icing, whoever's in the lead gets. Um, uh, gets it. So if if the player who needs to get it to, to call the icing comes up, hmm. then uh, then it's called an icing. To avoid the fact that people were just smashing they were into just each other, full speed and smashing full each other speed. at the far boards, right? So and like right. people were, were getting fucked up yeah. big time from this. And as a response, yeah, this like a new rule. Yeah, like a guy skating like 35 kilometers Exactly. So in hour. response to this, because like there was actual, like lots of damage happening to the players right. because of this thing, and now they added. Um, this new rule for the refs to be like they can call it to be like nope uh, this guy's got it or this team's got it okay um, but that seems like a very rational thing to do in that moment where it's like no no this is clearly a problem but like that instance you just Danny just talked about seems like a once in a sort of like had that incident not come up that season, do you think the rules would have changed? No, not not in that regards. People yeah. would have been like, yeah, if 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 nothing like that happened, then we still probably have those high noses. That right. we, I think that those high noses, the high noses look badass. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to see I them did. back. I did, and it worked better. Yeah, it worked better. Yeah. The cars were were better. I'm gonna show you this quick, Mike. As we can't really show this on video, but you right. can. This is the about 20 seconds. This is the incident that we just talked about. So Alonso, this is right at the beginning? This, this is, yeah, right at the start of the race. The first corner. Yeah, we're talking about... So Alonso's driving this Ferrari. Oh, you, yeah, I've seen this. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, we showed, we showed Mike yeah, this yeah, before. Yeah, I've seen that before. That's yeah. crazy. But this is the incident that dropped the noses because yeah. he almost okay. got his face taken off there, right? So it's it's it's, it's always a, a, a thing that... Right. Okay, so the, 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 F, the FIA or, you know... I thought, uh, wh- it seems whoever, like such a weird. But but he, here's the thing, right? Like right. in the politics of it, uh, uh, the way that they stand are, or at that point where that um, that happened, uh, and because that happened, and because it was dangerous, and it could have like basically taken Alonso's head off, um, then they were put in a position where they had to make these rules. Literally half a meter back, it would have took yeah. his face right off. Yeah, but but they were in a position where they had to make these rules to like hopefully prevent anything like anything bad from you know something bad didn't happen there. But right. what if it had? What so if it had? so so right, they, right. They, they had to no, make these I'm, rules. No, I'm not. I'm not. Well, but saying the, it's bad the thing call. is that they make these rules, and then when it came down to the teams to interpret the rules last year, right. they came up with those like dildo noses of the cars and <laughs> and things like that. That and then what, what happened is that then the, those posed their own set of problems because what if what happened is that they, in, instead of instead of protecting the cars, those noses what could have potentially have done is being so sharp and so low down Punctured that they, the yeah, they could have either punctured the side or like into flipped the, the car over. Into their survival. Yeah, therefore generating another problem altogether that they hadn't thought about. So that's, that is a problem with trying to legislate Mm-hmm. Something without without knowing exactly how it would turn out, and right. you and you can right. I guess in, in a certain way you can't know um, how a specific set of rules is going to get interpreted by all the teams. Right. But then the problem that you that you face is that okay, well, do I overregulate then? Do I make it so that we cover all the bases? But then by covering all the bases, or by covering all the pos- with the possible different outcomes and different scenarios, then you're just making like. So many that, rules that, that constrict. Printed, that's like yeah. 400 pages. Then you're making so many rules that constrict people like Adrian Newey, for example, to, to, to generate like beautiful cars that will work well or, 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 or people with the engines, whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. In, um, even that problem that you just mentioned even has been addressed. Like we're gonna, not going to have enough time today. to. We want to cover all the rules that are coming up this this season. But one big one, as far as safety goes, with those nose problems puncturing the side is that the I think it's what they use as Kevlar on the inside as a puncture-proof material. Mm-hmm. Before it was up to about the driver's waist. Now it comes right up to their head uh, okay. because of that problem. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Into the uh, survival cell, the sides of it. Anyway, I want I want I want to finish. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> uh, this uh, keep going with the power players of Get F1. Out of here. 
And yes, we have we have uh, uh, arrived at uh, <laughs> we've at, arrived we've arrived at, uh, at, 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 at the one team that uh, has always 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 been in Formula One. <laughs> And, and, and that, that, that guy seems like a nice guy. Formula he Uno. Like nice yeah, Formula Uno. Uh, he, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Ferrari, huge power player. And no All matter right. what, even if they're winning or not, they're there. They're there. And because they're the oldest team in F1, they are the, the, the team that has the most fans around the world. Um, and actually, if you look at... Letifosi. Yeah, if you, look at, if you look at the rest of the teams... Mm-hmm. Um, even even from for- Force India, which uh, races for India, um, uh, Mercedes races for Germany, um, and uh, Red Bull, for example, races for Austria. Even though they they, they race like the you know the, the, their affiliation is a specific country, right. those other teams are all based in Britain. Because, oh really? Yeah, they're they're, they're based there. Their factory and whatever is all Milton Keynes. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in and around like Motorsport Valley, they call it because so many F one teams are based out of there. Um, the only one of, out of these big power players that's not based in England is Ferrari, oh, obviously. Shit. And 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 they 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 they're a big mark, obviously. Like you've, I'm sure that as soon as you heard about cars for the first time of your life, like you shortly after everyone you have, knows what yeah, Ferrari, Ferrari is. You know, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the Ferraris. Uh, you know, the, the idea that people have of, of uh, um, sports cars uh, you know a sports car is red it comes from Ferrari because yeah. they, they were racing for Italy and Italy is a racing uh, Italy's racing color is red anyway Maybe, especially when you're a kid when you, you see any supercar you're like oh my god a Ferrari yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're they, they no name and, and and rightfully so yeah. and because of that they get they get kind of they get they get special treatment in F one right. obviously right. Uh, at, before the prize money gets parsed out and whatever they get a cut that they get they get a chunk of money that no other team gets just for participating in Formula One like kind of Bernie saying thank you for being here here's like two hundred million dollars or something like that <laughs> but, uh, and oh my god and because and and but also yeah. because of that they, they also hold a lot of power uh and in in the in the decision making mm. um and now these two players that we have here you know uh, the, the rest of the board here that uh, that I put together a lot of them uh, you know a couple a couple are new faces a couple are like sort of new you know yeah, yeah. Arai he's he's new from Honda but these two guys the team that is managing Ferrari now essentially is brand new mm. um, before yeah. like you know even as recently as last year it was uh, like the, the main players were two different ones. These these two are brand new. Um, and let me start with Sergio Marchione, Italian Canadian. Oh, yeah, he's uh, he, mm-hmm. yeah he went to UFT and then he got his uh, his law degree and MBA from University of Windsor. Um, he's uh, he was he was basically he was born in Italy but raised in Canada. Um, you can tell by his expression there exactly like he said he's yeah, yeah he's 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 pretty much a, a good guy but he's also a no nonsense businessman right. uh, that has uh, he was tasked with the almost seemingly impossible task to um, bring Fiat back in the, so so right. the, the, he he came to life because he brought Fiat back into profit he turned it into like. He basically turned into Italy's biggest, um, like b- biggest business, biggest powerhouse of, mm-hmm. uh, of industrial right. uh, output. Um, he he then went ahead and he was instrumental in Fiat acquiring Chrysler. Mm-hmm. And now Fiat and Chrysler are like basically the same company. Uh, he's the CEO for both. Um, he, he, then, then what he did with Fiat, he did again with Chrysler. Now Chrysler is is back into like making money. Mm-hmm. Like he's uh, he, he, well, well, one of his quotes is like, he, for example, like when when they interviewed him, he's like, he said, he, you know how they have like the Detroit Three or Detroit Four car companies, right? He said, he's yeah. like, he, he said something like, we might be this the smallest one of the three in Detroit, but we're not the dumbest. Like he's, right. but, yeah, but yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, oh, well said. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Like he's, and, and he's managed to actually like make some money. He repaid the debts to the Canadian and American government um, under Chrysler. So he's, he's got an impeccable track record, but he's, he's also like one of those guys that is known as being like, a workaholic apparently like yeah. dur- during that time he would only sleep you can't see it on his face but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah really yeah. he looks young and happy but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got some stress um, probably good buddies with lance stroll's dad too pro- yeah probably yeah anyway he's he's so he, he 
uh, w- w- one of the things that always makes me laugh is that apparently when he got uh, when, when when he went to Italy mm-hmm. uh, to take to, to manage Fiat, he was shocked and appalled because the other managers and his and the people that he wanted to communicate would only communicate amongst each other via their secretary. They would send like little memos to each other, whereas he like. Would be like, no, I, I want to talk to you. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> We're, set up a meeting. No, no, we get to do this now. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong and with you? <laughs> you can you can even tell by by and, and this is pretty much what he looks like all the time. He's always wearing like a pullover sweater on top. Yeah. Like he, he he shuns like full full suits. Like, right. like So he's he, he's always on the go and he's he's got a good attitude and um even though uh what he's trying to do right now and some might say that may, that it may not happen may or or it may just be a publicity stunt but. Um, right now, what uh, the the Fiat Chrysler Group is trying to do is spin off Ferrari mm. um, and sell it off um, in the New York Stock Exchange or something. Um, but before Ferrari, before he can do anything significant with that, um, he's got to bring Ferrari back to like back to glory. back to good standing, back to glory, right? right? Because right. Ferrari won't. In, in his mind, he say, he thinks that for Ferrari to 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 to, to be the team that it, that it or the company that it is, like mm-hmm. it needs to be winning races. Ferrari needs to win and sure. selling cars. In the last and, the and last few months, didn't they release now three road cars? Yeah, you know, <laughs> the FXX here. I'm not sure if that's street legal. No, that's only for that's a track car, but yeah. people will. Buy they, they, a handful of people will. Three new models, at least, anyway. In the, yeah. last, in the last few months alone, and he's Canadian, and you can, you can tell that you you can, you can see some of his Canadian no not no nonsense. Attitude uh, in, in just when when he gets interviewed in English, he's he, he's hilarious to watch. Like because he he'll like he'll he'll tell it how it is. Yeah. Right. And and he clearly he has one objective. He's focused. He's got one objective in his mind, and is bringing Ferrari back to winning races. Right. Uh, from a very high level, so what? So yeah. anything that he can do to do to, to make that happen, he has done. He's he's sacked management. He's sacked people. He's brought new people in. He's he's eliminated a culture of uh, some people say like a culture of of waste of that was disguised as you know Italian traditions. Mm. But no, he's, he's so he's streamlined Ferrari, and he's to me it. The results that Ferrari had this testing season, this testing. Yeah, so far, who kn- yeah. again, it's so hard to tell with the other it's, teams who's sandbagging and take. stuff. But if Ferrari and, and looks Reikonen, in good shape, Raikkonen basically shit the bed last year. But if him and Vettel can bring it to Mercedes, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah, like Alonso did two years ago. Went down to the last race. And there's no double points this year. Yeah, it went right down to Brazil two years ago. Yeah, the Alonso fight. It went back and forth. He almost won that race. Even mm-hmm. they're close. Yeah. So they could, they could taste it for sure. And, and, and the fact that they've been that they were able to do this in like basically from from last year's car to this year is a complete change that some teams may not have been able to do like such a radical change, such a ra- like such, such a sharp radical increase in performance from one year to the next. And even now, I think uh, Renault is maybe having some doubts. They said something the other day about. Now they're considering maybe saving some of their tokens towards the end of the season, <laughs> yeah. so they they can um, have a combinatory effect, I guess, into yeah. next year, and yeah. bring more of a jump next year. Because I guess they've more or less given up. I don't know. Yeah. So Sergio Marchione, uh, Honda's the big. Uh, good on him. Good, knows? good, good, good Canadian boy, Canadian Italian or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's um, he, he's he's doing some good things. I think I think he. He does intrinsically as well want the best for the sport, mm-hmm. and but to him the best for the sport is also bringing Ferrari back to winning, right. which Obviously. I mean <laughs> I'm not opposed to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and as part of his grand plan, he has brought this man here, Maurizio Arriva, Arriva Bene. Bene. Now Arriva Bene, like he, whereas he's been, uh, whereas Marchione has been operating more from like the, the very top level, like just you know. I'll do what I can, but what I can do is, you know, change people, you know, and change the management. So he 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 brought him, and he. Mm-hmm. Arriva Ben is kind of a good name for racing. <laughs> yeah, it means it arrives well. Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Your car arrives well. Um, Arriva Ben, he comes. He, he he's he's been associated with Ferrari for a long time. Um, way back to Ferrari's big big sponsorship uh, by Mal- uh, Marlboro. Right. Uh, he's he used to work uh, for Philip Morris, you know the the, the tobacco company, and 
he was there for a long time and he was instrumental in bringing um the, the the big marlboro sponsorship to ferrari and since then uh he's been involved with ferrari actually to this to this day uh, most of the advertisement that space on a ferrari car actually belongs to marlboro but because because of the laws yeah, yeah because of the laws they cannot uh yeah they, they cannot advertise for cigarettes then marlboro part then they farm the, that space over to other companies so whoever wants to advertise on a ferrari they go th they pay marlboro uh, and then they, they can put their stickers oh on the car God. yeah but anyway but for, this goes sorry for anyone that's into uh last week tonight john oliver excellent segment on cigarettes and philip morris this week oh yeah <laughs> nothing to do with f1 but <laughs> similarly related nice anyway yeah but he uh, very uh, like uh, like ted Krabbe's uh, Kravitz said, "Very dapper looking guy. He always mm -hmm. seems to yeah. like be very, very, very sharp, very He's got sharp a few looking. Buttons undone there. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he looks like he, guess that's an Italian thing. Yeah, so he, but he he's a good looking guy. You know what I mean? Like he's a, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a guy. And, and uh, to paraphrase something that I think uh, Peter Windsor say said, I think uh, it was him." The more that I hear coming from Arriba Bene, the more I like him. Like, cause he's mm. he's he's been the one that says he, he he's the one that said let's bring let's bring F one closer to the fans. You know, instead of yeah. holding the press conferences in a closed room like in the at the track or whatever on the Thursday. I like that. I hope yeah. they implement this. Let, let's put him let's put him out there in some forum in, in the local city where where people can come and actually see the uh, the drivers getting yeah, interviewed. Yeah, do it downtown. Like it's, Montreal, the tracks in the city. Yeah, that's where we're going. But. Yeah, why not have it downtown? Have it in a yeah. big conference center where you can have. Wait, it, wait, it, can, it can be public attendance, and anybody can come and see uh, and see the races, and and just bringing. You know, he, he's all for a couple of things. He's all for bringing the sports, the sport closer to the fans, mm. and he's even he's even uh, being playing with the idea of of making streaming more available. He's talked about yeah, that. Yeah, everybody's into that. Yeah. Again, no, not everybody, man. Not 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 Eccleston. Eccleston well, not couldn't Bernie get, yeah, couldn't get Everybody fuck. except fucking Bernie Ecclestone. Yeah, He's dumbass. But again, <laughs> again, UFC. I'm into fighting. This is what they're doing now. Their you their YouTube channel. They hold the press conference the day before with the weigh-ins and the post-fight conference is in a. Usually, at the, a lot of them are in Vegas in the MGM Grand. So they have 10, 15,000 people show up. They do it in in the same stadium where they're holding the event. They have the athletes come out and talk. It's streamed for free live on YouTube, oh, which gets Jesus. hundreds of thousands of views. Of course. I've watched, I've watched maybe a handful of, of course. Of, they're like every week, but yeah. it's available. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Ecclestone, come on, man. Yeah. And this, before we move on, let me just talk about Gerard Lopez here because this is the perfect timing. Yeah. Because this is the team principal for, uh, sorry, the, the Lotus boss, the boss man. And uh, I just got a quote here. There's a big article. But basically all the same stuff we're talking about. He goes, uh, Formula One TV ratings are declining steeply, whereas the show on track is exceptional, which I agree with. It's, it is. It's gotten, it is. I was very skeptical about these new engines. No, but, but it works they're, well. they're great. Albeit still improvable, Lopez said, the sport must reach out to the younger fans, namely engage them not only through TV, but above all through the internet and social media. Exactly. What's more, F1 does not have any genuine marketing department which is insane for yeah. being the biggest money sport in the fucking world, which means there exists a significant untapped potential for commercial oh, opportunities. Yeah. According to the experts I meet regularly with and who invest in other sports, obviously he's the team boss for Lotus, Formula One remains the only active activity offering a global platform yep. likely to year attract to world corporations, and yet there seems to be some sort of blockage. And it goes on, he's obviously under no illusions as to where the blame lies. Mm -hmm. Why do these potential sponsors never make the leap when they're only when they're not really daunted by the amounts requested in F1 or any other sport? You know, mm -hmm. any sports sponsorship is going to cost you tens of millions of dollars for a global sport. What's holding them back? Is it because of the sport's archaic management and organization, which we're talking about right now? While around nine hundred million dollars per year is redistributed to the teams. The system keeps giving too much to the haves and too little to the have-nots, which you can kind of see here with this yeah. group that they've put together, the strategy group. Yeah. The haves are at the top, making the decisions, raking in money, 
and deciding that the have-nots shouldn't even get the prize money that they earned last year, like manner. Yeah. Which is what Sahara Force India said. Fucking dude has... Malia has $750 million to his name, <laughs> and he doesn't want this team to come back because they might compete with him. Maybe. How yeah. about just work harder and win some races? Anyways, I agree with Gerard Lopez heavily, and I think a lot of people do, that there's, mm. there's no way to watch this legitimately online. No. If you're in North America, you need well, I mean, CSN or NBC, which don't show all the races. Or a, or a Racing for Me invite that we're raffling. Yeah. Yes. He did it. He did it. And he today did this it. week, show us your favorite corner. Yeah. But really, especially because a lot of these races are now in Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. If you want to watch them in North America, you have to stay up through the night. And you can't get Sky, which is, Sky or BBC, which are the best coverage. And they're pay services. Yeah, well, know, BBC is but whatever. Are we are we done with this? Uh, no, 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 no. Hang on. No, uh, done. Just, sorry, I was just a little aside there. Uh, yeah. Um, as as I was talking about Arriva Bene, so Arriva Bene, I think he has he has he has the right mind, uh, and he's he's gonna do good things for the sport if he keeps thinking that way and if he mm-hmm. keeps talking the way that he has been talking. He's definitely driving, the, like he's helping drive the conversation to to the right places. Right. And 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 I'm and I'm glad that these two no nonsense guys are in what is pretty much the most important team in the Formula One. Maybe mm-hmm. team. Uh, and 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 that they're making their opinions heard, even though a lot of teams have been pushing back. And obviously, there's going to be. It's it, this is not going to happen overnight, just because of the way that the politics work. Right. But maybe in 2017, we can we can look forward to in a couple of years seeing some radical, ridiculous changes, <laughs> and 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 that that will that will make the sport better. Um. But there is still that feeling, and th- that even you got uh, from earlier on, and that and then uh, Lopez is getting that. Yeah. If you if you if you go ahead one more, there there is somebody <laughs> behind the scenes, the puppet master, pulling the strings, <laughs> the uh, that, literal strings with his uh, raggy fingernails. Th- yeah, that that, that 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 something out there is impeding real change oh my God. from happening. And and and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, but, I'm but, but, sure this dude saw. That Ferrari concept and was like, Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> no, that's not fucking happening. Mm-hmm. Push it back to 2017. Come up with something new. Yeah, might have been his idea. But but the thing is, okay. So at one point in the 70s, yeah. Ecclestone bought the, um, the 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 F1 uh, commercial rights and whatever, and he was tasked with the mission by the teams to generate as much money possible uh, from F1. And 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 the thing is that things that were true. In that time, mm-hmm. and things that were true and 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 unquestionable truths in the seventies and eighties are not so anymore. No, like totally. the, 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 the t- television alone is not the best way to reach mass audiences. Up until right. ten years ago, that was the only way. Yeah, Ugh. but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. and, 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 and and now you know for, for sport. A, it's 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 increasingly not a, like it, not a not a not the best way to to reach mass audiences to reach mo- even just just do it for the money man I'm yeah. telling you like you there is way more money out there to be to be gathered from the internet but just because he doesn't understand how to do it right it, let me exp- even if he let does. me ex- let me explain even- it to you I I can I can lay it down step by step how you can satisfy the fans satisfy the the, the the teams get more money out of the internet than you could ever 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 be all, be be able to extract from from just television alone but just because he doesn't so he's he's he, he, formula 1 management is a pretty small operation, like you said. That they don't, they don't even have like a proper marketing team, right? Because they're pushing uh, those. Uh, I didn't know that, but that's incredible. How? How well, do they cause, not? Because they're pushing those responsibilities. I think yeah. To to the broadcaster, so they're saying okay, not even the broadcaster. Like say like uh, Montreal, I yeah. get the promoters, right? I yeah. get emails from the city of Montreal advertising the race, right? Right. Yeah. Because I've been there. I bought tickets last year. They have my address. But Formula One should be saying. Not just to people that are in Canada that have bought tickets before, mm-hmm. who obviously are interested in going, but to the, everyone in the world. Yeah, here's the Montreal race. To here's the right. Russia race. Right. Even even to everyone in Canada, I find I I am shocked and appalled. Uh, as, uh, 
as a person that wasn't born here, right, uh, and didn't live, you know, my, my most of my formative formative years, I lived in Colombia. But when I moved here, like I, I, I was shocked that people just don't know people on the English they side. They don't of, know. People on the English side of Canada, they just are not aware about Formula One or, or that Canada even has one of the most important Formula One races and, yeah, and one, most, of, one of the most historically... All the drivers love it. Yeah, it's important. never leaving the calendar. To be honest, <laughs> like well, I, I'm telling you right now, this is the truth. A lot of people, like more, a lot of people, a big chunk of the world population knows about, like, like even just knows about what the hell Canada is because of the Grand Prix. Of that Grand Prix. More more than more than Jesus. the other people that like think of like, you know, the humanitarian missions that we have and whatever. Yeah, I yeah, guarantee yeah. you more the people in like had. fucking Thailand or whatever know about Canada because of the yeah. Grand Prix. And this is a this is a this is a truth. I yeah. I knew about Canada because of the Grand Prix. Right. Like, you know, I was aware that Canada existed as a country, <laughs> really, because Canada, let's be honest, it doesn't make many news here and there. No, no. But, but, but then, when it does, it's an embarrassing fat man as a <laughs> Toronto fucking yeah. mayor. <laughs> Rob yeah, Ford. I, yeah, I guess like... Ford Nation. <laughs> oh. I did not vote for that man. Uh. <laughs> but but anyway, you, you know what I mean? Like, so so it's, it's, it's an untapped potential that in many, many ways, but he's... Um, I, I think so that w- what we're dealing with right now is that an aging management that has that have been surrounded by a group of people that that they all sort of agree that the old way of doing things is the best way of doing things. Mm. Even though, like, he's the he is the FOM. Mm. He owns the rights. He could be making so much more money. He gives oh, yeah. these exclusive deals to whatever Sky and or to BBC for half the races. Or whatever. Yeah. But we talked about this before about, like, again, hockey has, there is more than one service available to watch every game yeah. for something like two to three hundred bucks a year if you're into yeah. hockey. Mm-hmm. The UFC has it for their fight pass is kind of a joke, but you can at least, you can go and watch the pay-per-views on YouTube even yeah. as a pay, but you can go to YouTube your credit card within 10 seconds you're watching a pay-per-view through youtube these guys <clears throat> i watch the race however i can i don't have a cable subscription yeah yeah i don't have a cable subscription either either no, we, we have managed to however you to, can to watch the race uh, here and there <laughs> if you know what i mean <laughs> but you know what i mean i would be willing to pay whatever a comparable amount i guess would be maybe two or three hundred bucks a year compared mm. if you compare to other sports but to watch the 20 races live in HD on the internet without having to pay a cable company. Yep. It's reason it would be even reasonable at that price. You're mm-hmm. paying fifteen or twenty bucks for a race weekend. I'd pay that's, that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Shit. It's not available though yeah. because of that man yeah. and his and, but, distaste for the internet. But but we and, and, and we have another People thing. Use the internet. That that I, I wanna Sorry, my bladder's weak. I wanna I wanna point at that right now, so it's for a sport that started primarily in Europe, but now has a global audience of maybe half a billion people Mm -hmm. watch Formula One uh, across the year. You say like half a billion people watch, like 500 million people watch every race? No, not every no, race. Not I think, race. I think, I think, I think general uh, fans and uh, such. Yeah, I think, I think the the audience of Formula One okay, has been said to be half a billion. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what what is it like? One fourteenth of the world is uh, is into F one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at one point, but either way, I, for a sport that started you know primarily in Europe, but has seen uh, players from around the world, um, Formula One may not be. Mm-hmm. in the position at any point or another to call or to, to call the, to, the, the the top spot of sport in any given country you know what I mean like not mm-hmm. even not even in Italy not even in Britain when uh, where, where Formula One has a, a big foothold you cannot say that Formula One is the, the biggest most, the biggest sport right in each one of this on the, of those countries right but but to me, that is that is something that is intrinsic to the sport. The sport is Formula One is not going to appeal to to to, uh, to the most uh, you know to the biggest part of the population. Right. Um, Formula One doesn't have to like categorize uh, you know limit itself to that because to me, Formula One may not ever be able to call the number one spot in any single country. But it but is it, everywhere. Yeah, but it can be. 
the number one sport wo- worldwide. Right. It can be. It has mm-hmm. everything. I every two single years ago thing. it was. Yeah. Well, no, but and I think it might have dropped off a little since. But then. but you, but you know what I mean. It's 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 it, it, a lot of the uh, a lot of the things right now. Like a, a lot of things that are impeding the growth of Formula One is that because you cannot advertise. Formula One, and you cannot like expect the amount of audiences of uh, from Formula One that you know. As I say, let's let's pick a country right now. Any country, let's pick the U.S. Mm-hmm. You can't have the amount of audience, like the level of audience that say the Super Bowl has in in F1 mm-hmm. because because that is that is just not it's not built into the culture. It's not built into this. But what what F1 can strive to get is to be the biggest sport worldwide and that is something that is actually right now with with adva- with the internet with with streaming capabilities right now this is yeah. totally possible and maybe uh, not with Bernie Ecclestone well then and that's right and th- th- that's what management needs to see right now that they need to just as one point in the history of formula 1 um, the decision was made to expand outside of europe we need to see the bigger <laughs> picture and we need to, to rally up. And I commend... Sorry, Sorry I, got, I got, it got all fucked up. It's okay, it's okay. No, th- we need to rally up behind this man. <laughs> and we need to follow his ideals. And I let me be the first one to say, Viva la revolución. Viva arriba Bene. He's got, <laughs> he's got it. And I think, and I think that he... That That's great. It is, it is che up to... Arriba Bene. <laughs> the, 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 we should actually look at the bigger picture here and see what's happening in the world at large and see what see how far F1 can go if we just if we just open it mm. to the fans if we open the streaming capabilities and 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 we can actually do something as fans of F1 well, and, and, and honestly, and I, and I invite every Australian because uh, recently th- th- there's been a lot of talk in the F1 subreddit um, that a lot of, of, of Australians are pissed because um, be, whereas uh, the coverage coverage of F1 of every race used to be on the uh, national free to air network, now right. it's been like half half of the races what are now being one one sports or, or ten. ten. Oh, ten sport. Yeah. Ten sport. It is anyway. a number. Small, yeah. Though. Anyway, it, yeah. now now that's it. Now you have to have a subscription to like Fox Sports or something. Anyway, yeah. you can do something. You can stand up, and 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 show these people that you will not be bullied mm. into having to pay for something that th- there is no need for that. Mm. There's if you plenty. Want, if you want that Fox, if you want Sky, you need in those countries. You're not getting that one channel. You need a yeah. TV box, monthly subscription. And about forty other channels that they're gonna force on you. Let's show. Let's let's rally up behind Bullshit. this man. Let's rally up behind Riva Bene and show the old guard that their way of doing things is not the only way. Mm. I urge every single person out there, and I'm not I'm not I'm not inciting illegal behavior, but <laughs> look for alternatives because they are out there. Streaming will be available out there. Things like torrents are available out there, and and if you're if you're doing this, and if you and if you and if you're watching your races using these alternative methods, um, and and they are better than your lo- than, than your local coverage, and if they are better than what's in offer, or at least it's if they not are your local coverage that you're not having to pay forty bucks a month for. But you know what I mean? It's it's if if there is a different alternative, and if we and if we can show them it by by doing this over and over and over again, that they need to look into things like streaming, into things like live um, like the live coverage of every single session, including testing. Why isn't testing covered live? Yeah, I would. I would have loved to. Like, spend, I would throw that out in the afternoon. Yeah, I don't yeah. have a job right now. Exactly. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> I would have spent all afternoon watching testing, even if there's nothing on track. I would have just left it on. Yeah, just Why? Be on in the background. Yeah, like, other, like be, I leave other things on in the background. It can be on time. with even like overlaid digital ads on it, making money for them. They they're just yeah, not. Throw they're missing an opportunity that's there, and that's not my fault. That they're missing it, and because and 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 we as fans should make a stand. Because we have right now, the thing is that with with the internet, with all the technological advantages that we have now, we have the opportunity now to make a stand. Might recommend Twitter bombing 
Um, Echo Stone, but I don't think he has. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't <have> exactly. <laughs> he know what I, don't, it is. I don't think he has. It's not what Bird I know. F1 does. F1 account. does, though. F1, like, it, I think they are at F1. Write them. Uh, just, just make it happen. Get the idea in their minds. Eventually, this will be the only way to go. Mm-hmm. But if we yeah, can. Listen, we hope you're fired up. You want an RFM invite? Yeah, it's true. This is one of your only alternatives right now, but let these guys know. Yeah, there we go. With your action and your words. This is what we can do because now we can be part of this group, part of the power players that are making the decisions in F1. That's what I say. All (laughs) fans can and should be. This is, yeah, this is really like our sport. This was and should continue to be the biggest sport in the world. But this dude, Echo Stone, I think we can conclude is kind of a dick Mm -hmm. when it comes to negotiating. One of the things I know that he did, because uh, there's now speculation that the German Grand Prix won't even happen because the fees are so high that they need to charge so much for tickets that not enough people are showing up to the circuit. They don't have enough money to host the event and broadcast it, which is insane. Like there's two tracks in Germany that they've been alternating between the Nürburgring and Hockenheim. Because it was big, but because of how many much money and how many demands this guy has, he's like, all right, well, he he's mm. one thing he's done is expand into other markets. He's gone into Korea, which right. failed after four years. Is dead now. China, the Middle East, uh, but and India. But one thing I know about the Middle East, I read this week, is that now the Bahrain GP, Bahrain is one of the smallest. I think I believe they are the smallest and richest combined country in the world. The smallest country with the biggest GDP. It's like the smaller than our city here. Oh, shit. He, he gave them a Grand Prix, I think, four years ago. I think this is the fifth. It might be the sixth. I think it's the fifth year. Right. With part of their negotiation, part of their contract was that they had the power to approve or disprove of any other race in the Middle East. So now for the past two years, they've been talking about holding an event in Qatar. And... Echo Stone basically threw his hands up and said, well, I can't really do anything for you, Qatar, because Bahrain has the rights to the only race in the Middle East, so you're going to have to talk to them. And Bahrain wasn't going to give up their event, which actually they almost lost in the last two years because they have a lot of political problems there and citizens throwing things around. And Actually, yeah, it was canceled in one year, and they, they, they canceled it due, due to unrest. Yeah, and then they considered doing it for the past two years. So anyway, but they have the veto power, and it seems now that Qatar is going forward probably in 2017 as a new circuit. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been announced, but the speculation is that because of this and Ecclestone throwing his hands up and negotiating so hard, he basically, I I think that Qatar has paid the registration and entry fees for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Mm. What are the fees? Whatever the fees are called. Their annual fees, which are, what are they? They're like $50 million. At least $40 million or something. Ten, tens of millions per event. Can I, uh, uh, before we, before you get all celebratory right now, uh, <laughs> I'm having, my computer's having a bit of an issue. What, it's, it, it's, it, you, what is the issue? You guys are lagging behind your cameras. Ch- change the thing. It's, that's not the, the problem is, is that my computer is just overheating. Oh, okay. And it's slowing down everything. So uh, the audio is recording, which is nice. Mm. But um, yes. uh, there's going to be substantial lag. Do you between, hear this in your ears? Between uh, my camera and then your camera. But oh. well, um, don't worry about it. We're working on it. We're yeah. working on it, and soon it's getting um, better. Yeah. Soon, we'll soon it'll, it'll be soon. much, much yeah. better. If, if you're watching this on, on YouTube or or whatever, th- yes, this these are growing pains. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't but, worry. Uh, and but if the, you're ma- probably the not majority, listening to the majority of it, it yourself. The, the majority of it was <laughs> was one of the capture screens, right. and so it'll look nice. It it'll, nice. it'll you, we're talking over something, which is. Which is fine, but... Uh, Don't worry, the, loyal fans. Soon we'll have <laughs> video capabilities. Uh, MP3 soon, soon, soon. downloads. Yeah. Back mm. back catalog. Is this one mine? Oh, yeah. Synced up mm. audio and oh. video. Oh, it's going to be so... It's going to be so tasty. Okay. So, yeah. You know, you know, I, I have taken to bringing, like, a, a special beer or water. drink <laughs> the last the last few. Actually, I, I, I might just keep doing this. I Dude, this, I, this is a thing for me. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> I like it. 
So, but w- one thing <laughs> is that the, the, the last too. two sessions, I did manage to strike out with you every single one. You, you personally, Mike, did <laughs> yeah. not like the last two choices. I think I might actually have to put this bog water tag on this beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is this is uh, this is called bog water. Yeah. This oh. is called, yeah it, it, it is called bog water from. <laughs> that's the name of the beer oh. uh, from uh, from Ottawa Brewing here or, or Ottawa area Brewing Heroes. Okay. Bose. You know, okay. Yeah, I know Bose. the Bose. Yeah, I know the Bose. Yeah, yeah, you, Bose you can tell them about the big, big Bose bottle. And um, this is, bo- I had, I don't think I've tried it, but it's 6.6%. So, you know what I, oh, you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, Danny. Oh, shit. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully you like this one better than that Belgian beer last time. Oh, definitely. Nice. Definitely. For sure. Oh, yeah. It's good. Mm. It's got some what is it? fruit in it. Yeah. Oh, if you read the yeah. little tag that I came with, um, what they put in it to uh, to make it taste uh, this way is myrtle. Myrtle. Yeah. And and, and, uh, and I had to Google this because I thought that myrtle was just an old lady's name, but no. Yeah. Myrtle turns out... <laughs> 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 yeah, this is you not know, old bitch. Uh, uh, Grandma Myrtle. It's not that but, stuff one of those guys gave Jesus a long time ago. No, that's yeah. Myrrh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's the bog water. Yeah, but what a fucking name. <laughs> yeah, what, what a name. Myrtle is 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 some sort of herb, some some spice, and uh, no, it's it's it makes it taste quite good actually. It's not a no, beach. it's, it's not it's a beach in good. South Carolina. <laughs> no, hey, uh, what? I want to say it's like a the fruity. You ever mm. had a fruity? Is that what yeah. I'm? Ta- I feel like I'm tasting some of that. Well, no, fruity is made with strawberries. Yeah, so. that that, that <laughs> I, I know that, but it, it reminds me of that. Yeah, well, it's any, anything that has like you know a high sheer content, whatever. It depends yeah, on like how yeah. it gets brewed and stuff. But that tastes good. That's a uh, bog water. Yeah, Who yeah. knew? Not too boggish. <laughs> pretty good. Anyway, what are, we, are we? Are we talking about helmets yet? We have not talked about helmets, which is another bullshit decision made by this group of individuals here that we've been talking about for the last. <laughs> There you go. This one. This is uh, Vettel's one and only helmet for the year, I guess. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> one second. We're looking at uh, Tobias Gruner's uh, Twitter here. He's got the, uh, I assume, um, Vettel put this out. But for whatever reason, I don't think anybody asked for this. Nobody. Think, nobody did. I don't think anybody was concerned. I don't think anybody wants it. They've now decided... One helmet per dude per year, <laughs> or a woman if you're. A I'm looking at a, at a tweet now put it by uh, fake Charlie Whiting. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've <laughs> I've recommended this dude before. I don't know who he is, but he's hilarious. Fake uh, Charlie Whiting on Twitter. Yeah, fa- yeah, it's called at Char- it's at Charlie underscore Whiting on Twitter if you want to follow him. But he just put out this tweet uh, seven hours ago saying, "Congratulations to the hashtag F1 Commission on the groundbreaking advancement in cost control." One helmet designed per driver really moved the needle. You know, because yeah, it's, it's, it's not true. Like it's like this 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 decision. Like, if anything, it deserves satire. Because there, what? Yeah. Well, so Vettel, this is Vettel's helmet. He's the guy. He's had somewhere with it around sixty to seventy helmets. Per year, but Some, he's sometimes been the multiple only w- helmets per weekend. Yeah, but he's been the only one because most drivers are happy with just the warm helmet design, and I think that's yeah. I think he he probably has a buddy that he went to college with or something that's a uh, airbrush or something that makes. I don't know who makes his helmets really, but I don't think anything's <coughs> wrong with it. They've been doing <coughs> over the years. There's uh, charity auctions for race yeah. helmets, which the money goes to help charity. There's a. Uh, I don't know, man. The uh, the main argument against this is for the reduction of confusion. What? Who's which, getting confused? Yeah, but who's getting exactly for the less hardcore fans? I guess. But I don't think you need to be that hardcore. You have to maybe know the number one and number two driver to see who's got the yellow, the yellow, whatever the bulkhead, the, the camera, the, the camera mount thing. on top of the. Yeah. Yeah, they got the yellow and black, but. I don't know. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. No, this is a pointless decision. Um, and I mean, remember how in um, 
uh, for Monaco, most drivers, even if they're not Sebastian Vettel, they, they would change the, their helmet design. Yeah, I just, think that's just, that's the main charity race, I believe, yeah. that they all... Just, just, to, just to do a, a one-off Monaco. And it's because it's special for them. You know, Monaco special. Grand Prix is always special. And and why not commemorate a special occasion with a special helmet if you want to? If you don't want to... Like, why, why How should, much does a helmet cost yeah. anyway? I mean, it's a couple of hundred bucks. And I'm why should almost that? certain that's coming out of Vettel, in Vettel's case, his pocket. Yeah. He's, well, maybe. He's, I'm sure he's holding on. Maybe somebody's jealous. Like, I'm sure he's holding on to these helmets. And once he retires, he's going to have a lot of eBay auctions going yeah. on. You know I mean? yeah. Maybe not for charity, for his retirement <laughs> fund. But That's a res- his retirement fund. Some I don't know, man. Most collect bottles that he collects. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Helmets. Most of these guys have a somewhat recognizable helmet that they keep. Like, a lot, everyone knows Alonso's got the baby blue. And like you said, this is kind of a throwback to uh, Schumacher, maybe, when he was in his Ferrari days. The white helmet. But why should he be stuck with that? Mm-hmm. Especially, and it wasn't. It was actually not even Vettel going into the night races and Abu Dhabi with the sunset right. race. Dudes had uh, glitter, reflective, and LED the helmets. glow in the dark huh? glow helmet. The, yeah, with uh, sparkles on it. I think it was Vettel had LEDs in his, didn't he? Or was that? Yeah, no, Vettel, Vettel had had like LED light bulbs in it. Yeah, yeah um, Ricciardo had a crazy one last year. I think at Abu Dhabi for the night races. Yeah. Why not? Who made this decision? Yeah, this Al- one- Alonso. In, Alonso, known for basically keeping his uh, his helmet pattern basically the same, for, like even from back uh, in his lower Formula days, he he has made so a special thing. edition What's- like golden helmet for Monaco, for example. You know, just just because. Yeah, I think he probably auctioned it off. Yeah, well, give the money to charity. Yeah, well, yeah. Why why would you why would you g- 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 like get rid of that option? Why would why would you like? Is this over regulation? Yes. Which doesn't exactly that's what I said at the start. Nobody asked for this. Yeah. And the thing is, say Vettel, which who is obviously like collecting helmets and things, even if he's limited to this design, I'm almost hundred percent sure certain he's gonna have at least twenty of these painted up for the year. Yeah. Wear a different one each weekend, keep them in a box, <laughs> and also sell them. You're like, oh, these ones came from the year where I was stuck with the same design <laughs> but he's still gonna sell them yeah. he's gonna have 20 helmets at the end of the year he's not gonna wear the same one every weekend no. I totally totally disagree with this and I think it goes back to what I was arguing about the uh, itineraries weeks ago is that they're too plain like why why limit well the itineraries I think are the team they're whatever but they've s- mostly gone to solid colors I don't know for the what? Sorry, the itineraries, vehicle itineraries. Oh, liveries, you mean? Yeah, li- sorry, liveries. But I believe that they also it has. I guess it's too expensive, but they should be able to do whatever they want. Like, uh, their people were pissed off that Red Bull showed up in Harass with a camouflage. Yeah. What? Who cares? They got attention to F1, which is what we want. That's right. And it was awesome. Yeah. It was amazing. Is that sort of Especially, agreed upon? I don't know that. In terms of like, like people is the, is the collective sort of aware that uh, F one attendance or uh, attention has been uh, withdrawn? Listen, this is the way that I see it, Mike. I, um, I like F one. Um, I but, love it, but my yeah, I don't, I don't know. yeah. Well, I yeah, I I, 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 lo- I love F one, <laughs> and and I have friends that love F one, mm-hmm. but it wasn't always like that for me. Right, and and there there had to have been a point, and there was a point uh, in my life where I started to watch F one, and I got into it, and I was lucky enough to be at the right time and the right place um, to be exposed to it. Right, because otherwise, I mean, I I I actually used to be um, like I used to not be into any sports at all, mm-hmm. just just from you know, just from as a kid. Like I mean, I yeah. I played I played soccer. Yeah. In Colombia, because like everybody has to play soccer, it's like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know, one of, it's the eleventh commandment in South America. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you, you know, thou shall play soccer. But but I, I was never like a, fer- a fervent fan like most of my f- friends right. there. I never had like a like a team that I really rooted for. Um, and but then but then 
then I then I was exposed to F1, and I was uh, privileged enough, I guess, to to have had in my in my history in in, in Colombia, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya made it into F1, so it became a uh, a national thing, and we all were watching F1 for a little while, and and I got exposed to it, and now I love it, hmm. right? And I think that that same feeling, that same sentiment, is can be echoed by many people. Many many people that, for example, if it, may, maybe you you thought a, a certain way when you were growing up, or like when you were never into like um, like like roughing it out, but like you like analytical challenges, and some of those kids right. may, may grow up to like be you know ostracized and be called nerds eventually or whatever. But right. if you, if you if you actually found a sport that you like and I, and I do firmly believe that a lot of people that are called nerds or a lot of people that are maybe like that don't fit the the jockish stereotype in North America for example uh, could really find some like, uh, like some passion mm -hmm. that uh, or a way to express their passion in, in something like F1 mm -hmm. but if they're not exposed to it if if they don't know that's going on it's never going to happen to them I almost yeah. firmly believe that Nerds don't really even exist anymore. Well, like, well right, yeah. Everybody's got the oh, like oh, dude, most badass you, phone in yeah, their pocket. Have you been to yeah. 4chan? Laptops. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we have no, no, a, it exists. Had, it exists, man. It's just the that's. I don't know if 4chan really exists anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a few days ago, most of it got, I think. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like more or less, the idea it's of like just like HN, people. A chan is the new shit. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go off on like <laughs> a tangent yeah, yeah. or anything, but the but the idea is like maybe what? that. Um, there are always going to be people who don't, who have a hard time keeping up with the stream of everyone else, right? right? If we're uh, as outliers, analogy. of course, yes. yeah, yeah, and like not by choice. Like obviously, sometimes these people do want to be part of the stream, but, but like because of uh, anxieties or like whatever social like mm -hmm. problems they may be having. <laughs> You know, it's because uh, because like I was one of those people. Oh, like I definitely I like when I was younger, that was me. Right. Entirely. <laughs> uh, but now not not and not as much. But like I definitely understand uh, where it could have gone. Yeah. I sent it, though. I'm tasting a little bit of interest from you in this. You, I mean, you had zero clue what the fuck you knew F1 existed six, <laughs> six or seven weeks ago. Yeah. But none of this, right? <laughs> no, no. Uh, and right. you know what? It's funny. I've been, I've been talking to my band a lot. And I'm like, yo, man, F1 is fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> there's like some crazy shit going on in F1. Yeah, you just need and that, like, that spark. I mean, yeah. like Peter that we hang out yeah. with. He's, yeah. Two years ago, he'd, he'd come every couple of weeks and hang, mostly because we're drinking beer. Yeah. Watch, <laughs> come, come watch the races with us. Mm -hmm. and then he got into it. He came to Montreal. Uh, totally. He's, he's no, watch, no, he's I, watching I, races like, all by himself now. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Ah, that's yeah, awesome. like the, the, the other day, well, actually, like uh, earlier in the year, he was correcting me on some like <laughs> like some rule changes that happened. He was like, "No, <laughs> actually, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. actually, <laughs> <heavier>. yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but seriously, and and and, and I think that that um, there there is a certain kind of people that if exposed to it. Um, would 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 eventually be drawn to to, to something like Formula One, and right. all, all they need, all they would need for that, for that spark to ignite, is exposure. Mm -hmm. and, and I and I think this is where the social media and broadcasting yeah. comes in. And I, mm -hmm. and I think that that, that sport in general mm -hmm. is is something that 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 can unite people. And that, like you said, for example, if you if you if you're Definitely feeling does. ostracized, and if you if you if you don't have an avenue to like express. Right. Your, your your passion otherwise or or if it's if it's low if you if it's looked down upon that, that you do certain things um finding a sports community can be an outlet for all that and can sure. actually oh, totally. can actually make you totally. a better person uh or or, or you know or, or at least made make your ride through life a little bit more enjoyable right uh, a, a weird yeah. a weird aside to this yeah. and uh, like i i do understand what you're yeah. saying but like the only oddness i have about this sport is that i can't really play this sport yeah yes that's my only problem like right. with hockey it's right. like i can like even like playing on the computer or right. like xbox or whatever like that's fine but like and i can grab my stick and just go play on the ice well, or if you look out this window right here you can see yeah. an actual skating <laughs> rink there's an actual skating rink out here <laughs> we could point the camera out there but you could there might let me see can you see it from here there's probably nobody there's actually, there nobody's yet. there right now but no, yet school actually it'll be soon school's over you guys should bring your do you have skates? Do I you do. Guys have skates? I don't have skates yet. Well, yeah, I oh. see what you mean. Like, you also have a car parked outside this window, but yeah. we can't exactly go race it right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could definitely get right. a couple sticks. 
and hit a puck around that ice rink across totally. the street. Right? Th- th- that is definitely like a um, like a, a limitation that a, that, yeah. that F one has. But but it's a there limitation. There are many video games. But, it, it, yeah, but we should you know <laughs> you know what we should do? We should get a little crew together. We should go to go karting or something. No no no. Um, you guys ever been to? It used to be called Sega City, and now it's called uh, yeah, Pl- Palladium. 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 Yeah. Palladium. They got uh, F1 race cars there, and it's like eight. Oh, there's the, si- the big simulators. The, 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 the big simulator thing. Yeah. I went. I went like that a, thing's about a year ten years old. Yeah, now. it's old as fuck. Like, but it's it's, it's still fun because you get that. <laughs> I, I, Danny, I, Danny would win every time. Yeah. I grew up like five <laughs> like five minutes. From oh really? There. I, I, I grew up it. when I, I when I when there. I played it. I won. I was like, yeah. I'm the F1 champion. No, but racing is also like an instinct that, okay. Yes, he, he, yes, he, totally. He, he, here's what I was going to say. And I said, um, I, I've heard this over and over again. That it, uh, there, there's a reason why football, and by, by football I mean soccer, yeah. um, is the biggest sport in the planet right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because It's simple. Yeah, all you need, and I, I've seen this, like growing up in Colombia, like all mm-hmm. you need to play soccer is some guys – you know, a group of guys or girls, even a, a group of people, and, and a pig's belly. Yeah, like yeah, yeah either a, 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 a soccer ball, a football, or if you don't have a, the the proper football, anything will do. A can, yeah. a piece of a yeah. piece of paper yeah. that you roll up in a ball yeah. and tape it together. You know what I mean? The the, the, the barrier of entry is very low. Very to, low. Uh, yeah, very low to yeah. soccer uh, in terms of what you need to yeah. actually get into it. Yeah. Um, the and lowest barrier of Auto racing is very high. Like, yeah. like you, you <laughs> yeah. just suggested going to there or Centennial Park to go go kart racing. Yeah, you're gonna spend like fifty bucks. Yeah, fifty for fifty bucks, you'll get about like twelve minutes of driving right. a go kart. Or you just play like Mario Kart and just yeah. get fucked over by the blue shell. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> no, but but yeah, but if you want to for th- real get in yeah. a yeah. gas no, no, powered, totally. I, I think power. that I think that you can still Gee. though, d- despite all that and like. Y- to get into something like, um, uh, just to relate it back to, 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 to for example, hockey, mm. um, the, the lowest of the low, say, in, in, in Colombia, in, in terms of the low social ladder or whatever, like if you can be as poor as you want, Whoops. but and, and, and live in a, you know, in a forsaken community that has no economic activity, but you can still play soccer with your buddies because all you need is it's something to kick around. Yeah. Not even totally. a ball. It can be just. Yeah. Well, you know it's funny when right? I was a, when I was a kid when yeah. I was like I, I played like I, I didn't play a lot of ice hockey mm-hmm. but I played road hockey. Right. And like I would just grab a can, crush mm-hmm. it, and just practice. Right. Just exactly. Like, yeah. And that's all you really need, right? right. It's but, that. But for example, for 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 a kid of that stature, let's, yeah. and let's go back to my my kid in the on the like playing soccer on the beach in Colombia yeah, yeah. with like a shell that they found, right? Uh, for 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 him. To even consider just something like hockey that you that you that you think of as so commonplace, yeah, would be astronomical. Like yeah, say, like crazy. a pair a pair a pair of skates, uh, yeah. a stick, yeah. and yeah. and and the the gear that you need would be like twice over what a minimum wage worker earns in a year in yeah. Colombia. No, it's crazy. Right? It's they, crazy. Just, the that just just to get the gear to participate yeah. in hockey, yeah. and then you have to like you know be part of a team, whatever. So. So even hockey is not not accessible. No, no, I, but, I, I'm not saying it but, is. But I think that in certain in a certain way, in a, in a, in a very primal, instinctual way, mm-hmm. even though like yeah, hockey like yeah, all you need is like at the end like all you need is like a few hundred bucks and you can get everything that you need to play hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, and and motorsports and it, yeah, like you said, the lowest level of motorsports. Like you, to go go karting for fifteen minutes is like. $50. Yeah, and, and if you actually want to like take part of like races and whatever and like and like do that like recreationally, you have to have at least like a few thousand dollars to spare around and like buy like a beater car that you can like go around Jeez. tracks in. Yeah. The right? cheapest type of things I've seen was I saw a Groupon about a year ago, and they I forget what the discount was, but they mm-hmm. wanted about two hundred fifty bucks. To drive one, you know those the low wide, basically like a racing yeah. go kart. They would go like ninety or hundred kilometers an hour. <clears throat> they wanted something around two hundred fifty dollars for a, I think it was a forty minute session, something like that, mm-hmm. which is includes your instruction. So you're driving for like half an hour for two hundred fifty bucks in a go kart. Yeah, so the racing barrier is extremely high. Mm. But I I I propose this to you that even. When the racing bear, like when when the barrier is so high to get into motorsports, I think that everybody can relate 
to something like Formula One or can can find something to latch on in their own personal experience because totally. the racing instinct is something that we're born with. Right. Yeah. The same thing. The same Do way. You, you want to know what mine is? <laughs> I, I seriously, I, I kind of thought about yeah. this. Uh, so when I was, uh, so Star Wars mm -hmm. uh, is very. Uh, important to me and my family like it's something that sort of really binds us together okay as as something and uh when the new uh the new series came out the the, the, the one two, episode the one, one, two, three. The one two three yeah, yeah. though the, they weren't the Anakin saga clean, uh but the, the idea of pod racing was very important to me because <laughs> of like this is how it made me feel like right. there's something there's something to say about like like reaction speed like i play like a lot of video games oh, and, and i'm like yeah. i consider myself to be good at them and any yeah. any sort of time based reaction yeah. sort of thing i vaguely remember those three movies but i vividly remember the pod race <laughs> yeah. sequence which is like literally Super 40 40, 40 yeah. 45 minutes of the first movie yeah just the it, race it's, the, it's, the build it's up a in the lot race. of it and awesome. to me like uh, that's what i last on which, which, which the racing and uh, that uh and and pod racing video game Oh, for that fucking Sega, no, oh, no, after what? Sega. What was that? The Sega Palladium oh, system, Dreamcast, Dreamcast, Dreamcast. the Dreamcast. Oh I had it for '64. I had that and thing when I was like 14 years old standard. or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's uh, it's Dreamcast it's sort of racing. like I, the racing idea, the the idea of reaction time, the, in, mm, yeah. because that that's split second decisions. That's in the exactly. moment, exactly, and that's yeah. and that's something I can and really yeah, really appreciate. People, yeah, and people can relate to that. Yeah, even even like when you, when you were a kid, if you, if you have if you have if you had any siblings, you know that one of the first things and that you tried to do when you were a kid is like. Like uh, run faster than them at something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I thought or, because I had new shoes, I could run faster. <laughs> yeah. just no, but but, but, but seriously, okay. and tag. You know, we're talking about it, and and seriously, you, you can trace back um, the first sports, like you know, like the first competition sports that people came yeah. up with was e either racing or fighting, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you can you can you can tell like who's a clear who's a clear winner with that. So who, right. yeah, <laughs> this, right. this is my philosophy on sports yeah. is that I don't, I could like. Whatever, obviously, no offense, but I don't give. I could give a fuck less about hockey. Sure, yeah, yeah football, totally. soccer, yeah, yeah. baseball. I those, those I are believe, games. I believe personally that they games. are called games for a reason. Yep. Oh yeah, and that the only sports include things like where you can die, fighting, become huge oh, in MMA interesting. fighting, interesting. Okay, racing. Cool. I can even I can respect NASCAR because of that death aspect. Right. Not huge into indie, but it's very similar to Formula One, right. it's like the North American equivalent. Yeah. I consider those like, sports. I don't, like 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 esports, I don't consider sports. Like they're, they're games. The well, machine is part of it, but it's a man on the edge or a woman. But right. right. On and the right. limit. All of right. the things on that the are limit. in the Olympics also. Any of those, I consider them, they're sports. You're, you're not playing a game, even if it's just running or hurdles or javelin right. or whatever. Right. You are trying to be the strongest person versus the strongest yeah. or fastest person. Uh, yeah. Just FYI, we're at uh, two and a half. Whatever. Hours. Is there a limit? No, there isn't. All right, keep so going. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> There's no limit to this. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Formula Unlimited. <laughs> yeah, I, call, I consider those for real games. Interesting. Mm. Cool. Yeah. But anyway, like, so you, but you can no barrier to entry to those games. You, but yeah. you, but you, you can intrinsically in a, in a, in a way some some part of your being can relate. To, to, to the challenges of, of having, like you said, a, a quick reaction time. So, or racing or oh, totally. just, just, just totally. wanting, wanting to be the first one to cross the line, wanting to be the yeah. fastest. Um, yeah. That is something that, that can translate and, and, and it does transcend barriers. Mm -hmm. And there's also and something you, to be said about someone doing what they do. Uh, so, something doing, uh, someone being the best at what they do right there's something right no matter what it is yes. like you could be like that guy like i don't he's, even know the sport that well but i it. know what he's doing yeah. is is top level it's top right. shelf it's right it's the best at what yeah is happening and clearly i mean like the the machines that are being made the drivers that drive them mm -hmm. the the people who repair all those machines like there, this is a well-oiled machine i mean yeah no pun intended oh for sure but, but like that's that's how this sort of thing operates yeah. and that's like 
You can see that and you can Instead appreciate of, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, high barrier to entry is still like... Yeah, oh, for sure. That, uh, that's a, a thing. But that's like, a problem. You, yeah, once you latch on, what you said, like once you latch on to something, you're like, ah, okay, here we go. This but, is something. But the thing is, though, even for F1, with that high barrier, you... S- it seems like the guys, like, where these guys come from? But you look at somebody like Lance Stroll, he's 16, and he's racing in a car that has probably more power than all the cars I've owned put together. <laughs> I've, I've owned... Uh, and power to weight ratio, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I've owned, like, eight cars at this point. If you add all the horsepower together, yeah. this dude's 16 and racing him. Jesus. His, I don't know. His dad's a multi-millionaire. For sure. He's a billionaire. Sure. But, but anyway... And th- there will be a one point in, uh, in in our lifetimes. Like we won't have to wait too long for this to happen. But in our lifetimes, all these barriers, if anything, will decrease by a lot. Like mm-hmm. and, and we're talking about uh, like simple technological adoptions, as uh, um, the hydrogen fuel cell, like uh, becoming like a, 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 a pervasive thing. Um, Uber, for example, like taking taking over, like you know, Uber's mission is to 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 eliminate the need for anybody to own a car. Yeah, so, po- you, but you know what I, I mean. Posted, like, I posted a thread on Reddit uh, just this week about the first robot-controlled unmanned vehicle beating a racing driver. Ooh, well, it was yeah. not a Formula One car, right? But. It happened. It happened this week. Uh, a few the, people in that thread were a little bit skeptical the, of where it's going, but there will be there will be Jesus a point man. when 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 racing like racing cars mm-hmm. in our lifetime is is going to become very accessible for many people. I don't know what that looks like yet, but I know that like I know that we're going to get there, right? I know mm-hmm. that I know that right now like one thing that Martin Brundle one of one of the uh, commentary commentarists that I look forward that, that I look up to mm-hmm. a lot because uh, he was a former racing and he, he says the right things uh, he, he used yeah, to say he's, he's like, a great commentator he said you know for all we know right now the best racing driver that we can have like the best like the most talented racing driver in the world right now mm-hmm. is chopping wood in the middle of a, of a fucking forest in Siberia right now just because he's <laughs> not exposed to the sport you know what I mean like oh, wow he, what a great he, thing to say you know what I mean like, yeah. like and, and even me like like talking back to like the instinct like I I find myself like like sometimes like when I'm like you know like I, I I'm pretty I'm a pretty clumsy person but like sometimes like I'm like I I drop you know, something like a bottle or something, and yeah. like in midair I catch it, and, and I'm like, like and it's I'm one like, of those moments. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, ah, like, oh, did, like, did, did, totally. did, did you did you see that reaction yeah, yeah, time yeah, yeah. self? <laughs> yeah. Do you see it self? Yeah. Like I could be an F1 driver. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it, it, <laughs> if it, <laughs> if it was if 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 it was a matter of like if 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 it was accessible, like if it and it, and if it eventually will be, yeah. Then, then definitely more people will pick, like, will latch on to what we said, like the the primordial need to like see like the sport, and then and right. and they will be able to relate with the way like that some drivers attack some corners, and Especially they will get you, it. When you consider some some things like uh, I don't know, you've seen me play that shitty F1 2012 on the PlayStation, but I don't own one. But the new PlayStation, yeah. When you consider that. And I guess whoever is making the new Formula One game, yeah, I'm sure that that uh, PS4 or whatever is as powerful or more than the F1 team's best simulators that they owned maybe fi- less than a decade. A few years ago. Within yeah. a decade. Yeah. yeah. Within a decade, that PlayStation or Xbox, whatever you're going to play on your laptop at home, is more powerful than the multi-million dollar systems that these teams had a decade ago. Oh, which totally. Lowers the barrier because you get closer to being in a simulation. Can we like. uh once we get the new computer, once we get the new setup, uh can we do like a let's play <laughs> yeah, yeah. F one game? Let's yes. Do it. Let's do it. I, I, yeah, I, let's do there's it. there's already uh there's <laughs> F one twenty fourteen up. Uh I don't have like uh I don't have steering wheels or anything like that. You have a steering wheel? I have like a thirty dollar one, but oh, you know that's all you need. That's all you need. We're gonna set you up like right at the end over here, <laughs> and then you just get privy. You get privy to yeah. it. And we'll I don't know talk. if you've looked. At, I bought this one off a dude on um, I forget like Kijiji or Craigslist, yeah. maybe like three or four years ago for thirty bucks. But some people get crazy with these wheels. If you look on uh, say Best Buy's website, yeah, the half decent ones are three and four hundred bucks, man. 
They're the legit, man. I they, they, yeah. legit. You, they you, have something like eight and nine pounds of force feedback where you're like fighting this. Mine's like a piece of, <laughs> mine's a piece of shit. You can, Yo, man. You, you know, know, you know one you, finger, but. Even, even with, with the one that you have that yeah, doesn't have that much force it's feedback. Genuinely a toy. It, it gives you an idea of like, an idea. like yeah, like what when the, you like when when you're like trying to turn slip. in that kind of situation and like the car tries to fight back, but you like want to wrestle it into submission. Yeah, yeah, come on, uh, yeah, it's so good. It's okay. I, I'm it gives you, it gives I'm garbage at every F1 game. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but we have racers right now. We have we have kids, and and this is becoming this is gonna become a thing, and this is already a thing that yeah. have. Uh, the, the, the Nissan driving a kind of be or whatever like yeah. what they're what they're doing is that they're taking kids from around the world yeah. that have that play the video game and they they, they start these tournaments uh for uh, what, what was it Gran Turismo or whatever whatever it was yeah uh, some racing video game the new Gran Turismo and it was a big thing in India which yeah. I believe that the the dude who won that competition has graduated and is racing for real, I'm not sure what. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing though. But the new Gran Turismo, yeah. that's fucking yeah. Crazy. So you you because have these kids. DJ Malia too. Like, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's involved in it. So mm-hmm. you 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 have these kids now, and like and like and, and it's it, it's it's not there yet. It's not at the point where 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 it needs to be for F1 to become like a readily accessible sport for everybody. But right. but obviously, like racing in general, it's 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 now taking kids that all their previous racing experience was video games mm. and but if they're really really good at it and if they make the video games as realistic as possible and if they can dominate those courses and 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 if they have a if they have a good understanding of the race craft that's involved so uh, it because it doesn't always have to do with going fast all the time right. it it has it has to do with like thinking your moves ahead like two or three corners you right, know what i mean like, right. like like knowing the track knowing how every every opponent is gonna react to like so if i if i put this driver in a situation where he either has to run off the track right. or give me the spot will he do it or will he just crash into me you know you, right. th- those kind of decisions are happening in an f1 driver's mind all the time See, quickly this is an interesting parallel to the article i posted on reddit the other day you can find it and uh, read it if you want but the gist of it was that they it, it took them I, I believe like weeks or months to get this car to a point where it was beating the racing driver but to program the car they had a like a brain scanning helmet on a real driver because that what he just said is that <clears throat> when a driver comes to a corner and he's challenged with a car being on the inside or oh, i'm going too fast i might have to yeah. run off yeah uh they basic what they've realized from these uh, neural inputs is that they are doing it on instinct, like instantaneously. Yeah, yeah. No, they're totally, not thinking like, totally. "Oh yeah, I have to clutch, downshift, and turn." They don't think they, about they just do it. The, uh, yeah. the acts, they just they, do it. Yeah, they, 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 they let their animalistic instincts take over and like yeah. And then Some, these yeah. scientists and engineers programmed it into the car that won against this driver. Ah, like, okay. An instinctual type oh. of response. Oh, interesting. Nice. It's okay. So uh, f- funny. Like I, I think about this a lot uh, yeah. in terms of how someone reacts to something. In so like I imagine the the race, uh, the the race track, uh, mm-hmm. not compared to a map, say like in a Counter Strike or a Call of Duty, okay. or like. Understanding the map is or fun. Evolve. Or evolve. No, especially evolve. I have been playing evolve like crazy. But uh, <laughs> but like understanding the map is half of the battle. Yeah. It's half of the battle. Only because if the- there are so yeah, if that it could be more, it could be less. I'm not I'm not you know, I'm not set on those numbers, but like the idea is that it, at least half you need to know what's going on on the map yeah. where all the the bonuses are you know like are, all, knowing all the corners right like knowing all yeah. these sort of things and then on top of that you need to be able to react in the best way possible right and that is almost like its own fundamental skill right right memorizing a map skill being good at uh reacting to something knowing how to make a turn or how to like no i gotta move in this such of a way right in that moment like yeah. that skill to to realize what is the best move to do in the moment is also a skill it's also knowing when to uh pod race or you know yeah, yeah. good to, yeah. to go back to that sort of idea of like quick reaction time knowing the map is very very important but also the the reaction time yeah yeah like going back to that, I've seen um, 
like to the, just to talk to where the point of video games are. I think mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to look this up for next week. We'll get some details about the uh, India thing, but that they're considering, I guess, that Gran Turismo Six for PlayStation is good enough that they scoured India for kids that. The top guys that won in that game, they put them in go karts and progressively more powerful cars, and took a guy to the point where he's professionally racing now. Totally, and that's amazing. Where this dude who is not in F1 this year, but Magnuson, mm-hmm. he posted, I believe, on Twitter last year. He's like just pictures, like or Instagram or whatever, in his living room, playing PlayStation or Xbox, whatever the Formula One game. <laughs> yeah. He's he's no, just yeah. hanging out in his living room, I'm, practicing, yeah. and he's driving for McLaren last and, year. Oh, winning races. Before before that, um, one one of the guys that I've had like that I've <laughs> I really really like and I, and I, and I and I know that he's gonna be like a, a shining bright star of the future, Valtteri Bottas. Bottas. Yeah, uh, he he posted pictures before like when he was just when he just got into F one for Williams is that he's like he he basically like tweeted like this picture of like oh this is how I practice in the off season and it was just him like on the video game screen and he's like no yep. he's right now one of the most uh, complete drivers right now mm-hmm. that I can that I can think of I I play counter strike consistently to keep sharp like mentally like if I can't if I can't retain like a certain like if I bump into things <laughs> if I bump into things consistently I'm like okay I need to calm down and I need to yeah. play like some counter strike because it gives you spatial awareness right away. Nice. Like you know when you're sort of getting hit oh. or 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 sort of whatever. Like I it's it's like my sort of like reality check. Oh, video games are right now like way more important in like developing like certain regions of the brain that we yeah. would never like that we just in in, in in today's society wouldn't even be able to like develop Comprehend. otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, totally. To um, entities like the military's are using virtual reality now for soldier yeah. training and yeah, the, the, oh, the, the, then it, it, it begets and things. Yeah. It does beget, and it will eventually like it, it will eventually like mean that Formula One will at one point or another get one of its rising stars from video games, but it has it hasn't fully gotten to that point no, yet. Not yet. But I think that within yeah. with within our lifetime, even within the next ten years, I am sure that the way that this technology is going. We will be able to see mm-hmm. like somebody that satisfies the the requirements of reaction time and and a focus come through and become notorious from the video game world, mm-hmm. and that's only gonna be like a few hundred dollars worth of uh, of, of barrier entry. You know what I mean? Like yeah. totally. So, so yeah, there you I, go. I think I think that technology, mm-hmm. other like on top of bringing more people into the sport by making it available. To to, 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 uh, to to watch and uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and available for uh, like as people like okay, let, let's face it you, you and I are never gonna drive a Formula One car like if we were, we were past our prime <laughs> we would have had to like gotten in, get, got into that like way before yeah, but yeah, yeah. but oh, yeah. but we can we can still work. I realized when I was thirteen years old I was never gonna be an NHL <laughs> star I, I just, I'm like yeah. well it's already too late yeah fucking why bother <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean like so right. but, but but we can w- with technology and w- with what's available to today right we can watch it and we can experience it and we can have like we can we can have the same kind of passion that some people with with uh with better coverage years ago would have had and that wasn't available to us right so so that that has already been broken that that technology yeah. has already bridged that gap the next gap the technology will if obviously and and at one point it's just it's just a matter of when it will happen not if it will happen the the next gap that's going to be bridged is bringing people from outside the the world of like realistic getting into motorsports by providing things like video games or simulators right. or even i would love to see i would love to see a free simulator for for a free racing simulator sponsored by FOM yeah, out that there would be amazing. yeah like, just like that the world compete yeah make make or or mm-hmm. you know like fucking set up mobile racing stations in Africa and like take him like you know with with mm-hmm. it, yeah. It, yeah. It, take him from from little town to little town and let 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 just let kids have a go at it and find the best racers that you can find you don't you don't need people to jump in a car 
to be able to like judge like their the things like the reaction time and things like right. that. Like you can you can do that right now with technology, and eventually right. technology yeah. is gonna br- bridge those gaps. And I I guarantee you, within our lifetime and and most probably within ten years, we will see people coming from nowhere to Formula One stand uh, stardom just via technology. And why don't we just embrace that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's it's happening. It's you know why? You know why? <laughs> Money. No, there are there are dinosaurs still oh, yeah. walking around on the earth. That's, That's right. And, it's, That's not, and right. Like, it's not money. It's not because no, no, it's control. It's power. Yeah. It's power, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, so to, to go back, uh, I, I had my own personal. I, I was a witness to that sort of um, uh, that test in India with, with, with the racing and video games. Right. So. Right. I live with my girlfriend and another friend, and we used to play Mario Kart all the time. <laughs> and um, we used to play Smash Brothers. We used to play lots of games. But I feel like there are some people that just understand racing, who, who understand, no, I got to make this corner like this, because if I don't, it's, yeah. I'm going to end up in a position I'm not. that's not good. Yeah. Some people get it. Some people don't. And that, that, yeah, not yeah. In, in F1, they call it natural talent. Oh, they, that's what they call it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. like Lewis Hamilton has a high degree of natural talent. Right, right. You can find pictures of him though at eight years old in a racing suit, sitting in a go kart, holding a giant trophy <laughs> like the size of himself. That's just where, that's just where it comes from. innately. Yeah, yeah how to drive this thing. Born into it, grew up in that racing seat. Um, <laughs> he did it. He's a two-time champion. I had a friend uh, watch. Uh, like we were. I was doing like a little land party mm-hmm. when I was younger, and I had a friend who was watching me, and he watched me as I played. And I I've never watched myself play, but um, he, the first thing he said is like, "Oh, you you have uh, what they call combat awareness." And I was mm-hmm. like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> what is this?" And like in what like to me it was like, what he was talking about was like uh, how efficient I was at looking around a situation, nice. governing what like all the threats or whatever like you could equate it to like a, a corner or or whatever right but like yeah. just being aware of all the things that are influencing your choices uh, that you're going to make and that's yeah. really important yeah yeah, yeah. for sure and w- once you understand that about sort of anything yeah it becomes liking anything else that much easier that, yeah and, and like that's why like i've i've like i'm slowly falling in love with like f1 and in, in that whole sort of culture because it is like there, it's more than just the rate. Like, yeah. I wish it was more. To to be honest, it, I wish it was more about the driver than it was about the car that they're driving, mm-hmm. because that to me is how I, I I more relate to it. Where like you do need a certain skill. Like you have to be fast. Like, oh, yeah. You have to be strong in order to succeed in this sport. And I think that that separates. It's it's getting there, and 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 with with the right orientation and with the mm-hmm. right feedback from the fans. Mm-hmm. This is what I was talking about. It will get there. Mm-hmm. We will get to a point where F one will be like the the best sport of its kind. Totally. Yeah. Um, and, I think and we just have to push it in that direction. Stuff like this, the F one subreddit's getting huge. Yeah. yeah. Even just this People conversation we have, that we're having right now. Yeah. No, yeah, totally. Yeah. As fans, there is a voice that can be yeah. brought together and yeah. can get the shit. Like, really, 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 man. Like, I'm pretty sure this Barry Ecclestone has no idea what no fucking idea. Reddit is. No idea. No. no. He no. has no what idea. What the fuck is this? He has sub-reddit. no idea that he has, like, 20, at least, on Reddit, at least, per day, there's probably 20,000 people that scroll through there and just take a look <laughs> at what's going on. That's what, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's fucking imagine. crazy. Anyway, I think we yeah, are getting close to a point where we should wrap it up. Danny, yeah. you t- tell us about Barcelona. Barcelona starts tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh. Practice round two. You want, can you bring this up, uh, Circuit de Catalunya? Let's bring a picture up. It. Talk about this quickly. Um, sorry. A couple standouts as far as the uh, driver lineups for yeah. this weekend. No. Uh, was it this one? No, it's not uh, up there. It's, it's not up there. Just a new one. Just like circuit. Just put Barcelona circuit. Or it'll come up. Uh, you got it. You got it. There you go. Circuit de Catalunya. Yeah, there's a picture. There's, you can click that picture on the right. There we go. Actually, this is the old layout. Oh, final, really? This final corner here has been heavily modified into a... There's, there has a chicane now, right? There's a chicane over there, yeah. They slowed it, they slowed it down. Made it, that's actually really challenging. You got to slow right down for that corner. 
Should we Wait, one, one no, 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 that, that, that's good. That's a go back. I don't know where it stands. Maybe the fourth or fifth fastest track of the year. It's quick. It's hard to tell. They're in the far corner, like the the top left corner is really, really high elevation compared to the rest of the track. Oh, this one here. Over yeah, here. from the front straight to there is a giant hill. It's hard to tell from this picture. But yeah, practice starts tomorrow. Runs until Sunday. Four days of practice. The only real standouts are really uh, Force India, going to be making their first appearance. Yeah. I'm not certain if they're br- are they bringing this year's car or last year's I car. I don't know, man. I'm sure they'll let us know then. Your light bulb just burned out. I think it did. I think it did. <laughs> I think it did. Um, Force India is bringing this dude who is, I believe he... W- is it a con? Is it a con? Is it a con? It's Pascal of Airline. Oh, okay. He... Uh, He's somebody, something to do with Mercedes. He's got Mercedes backing, mm. which I believe they might be paying for his. He's doing the first two days for Force India, Thursday, Friday. And uh, Saturday, Sunday is going to be. Oh, it's back. Saturday, Sunday is going to be the regular drivers. He's got the first two days and he's got the two in season practices locked down. He's got the seat. So I don't know. I'm not actually 100% sure where this guy came from. But uh, Perez will be driving Saturday, Sunday, Hulkenberg. Um, Force India, or sorry, Williams is going to have Susie Wolf on the track. Susie Wolf is a chick. <laughs> yeah, she's driving Thursday for them. Um, I don't know, nothing special, but Terry, but Terry Bassa, Badas and Massa driving Friday, Saturday, and they're going to split the day on Sunday between them. Susie Wolf's got the Thursday. And for Lotus, Joylon Palmer. Joylon. Another new name. Another young guy. He was a winner of GP2 last year. Yeah. Yeah. Another young guy trying to make his way in. I guess. But he has no money. He's, a, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. He's, 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 he's hoping to get into F1 uh, on talent alone. And I think he will. Uh, good for him. Obviously, Lotus is more confident in Grosjean than Maldonado. Yes, be because Maldonado's even even Maldonado's mom is probably more confident than Grosjean. <laughs> <laughs> Grosjean's got the Sunday drive for Lotus. The rest of the team is nothing special. Nobody, nobody special. No extra drivers. I don't know. I guess we're gonna see what comes on track as far as uh, wing improvements and. Real quick before we go, what do you think they're gonna try to find out in Barcelona? Because Bar- okay, uh, Mike, you don't know this, but Bar- this this same track, the Circuit de Catalunya, Barcelona, they actually r- is race here. Yeah, the, this is the venue of the Spanish Grand Prix. Oh, so this is plus yeah. two practices. I, it, the next two practices. Yeah. So here. you know how like last time we were talking about Jerez and that's, yeah. that's another circuit yeah, in yeah, Spain, yeah. You know, like awful wine or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that was disgusting. That, that, that's a track that they Sorry. raced at like formula yeah. one used to race Long there but they it. don't anymore okay. it's only like formula one only uses it for testing but this is a track that they use for two sessions of testing as well as they race and there. the race the race there after after canada right i think or it before, is yeah. or no after, after. canada is after monaco yeah okay so yeah after, right after they hit the canadian grand prix they go here and right. it's a proper like it's a spanish grand prix so um it's different than the other one because it's an opportunity for the fresh drivers, obviously, to be on an on, a, on an F one car around a track that they, a track will they will be racing. Racing, exactly. oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, As, but the temperatures are are going to be different, obviously. So that's something closer to what closer than Harass as to what the season will be. I guess it's a few weeks warmer. Would you it's say, diff- Danny, that this test in Barcelona, because of all those things that we've just said? is going to be a bit more significant than the last test. It should be. And then all the other teams, they're obviously going to be bringing upgrades. Any, everything and everything they learned from last time, which we talked about, the amount of data is insane. Like, <laughs> teams, teams literally racking up terabytes of performance data from these test sessions. They're going to be all coming with different wings, different configurations. I think I think that different one suspension setups. One thing that I'm lo- camp, looking whatever. forward to seeing is um, the proper like race distance runs, because yeah. we haven't seen that in Jerez. In Jerez, we only saw race distance runs from only from Mercedes. Mercedes yeah. Really, they yeah. did like double, well, really double and triple race distance runs. Yeah, <laughs> so 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 I'm I'm looking forward to seeing race distances. See like what kind of teams can actually, you know. 
are confident enough to like go around the track at race distances, I'm going to be looking for top speeds, if anything. But obviously, with <laughs> bearing in mind, as always, the testing means absolutely nothing. Yeah, because of all the sandbagging. Yeah. Anyways, who are our uh, three RFM winners? Congratulations. Congratulations. You'll be able to check out this testing tomorrow uh, quite easily. And uh, well, I, th I, th I think I think only like well, if uh, Sky F One is doing like segments at the end of every testing, not not live. No, yeah, well, not there's, live. There's, but there's no, I mean, but there's, 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 no and there's no entire season, uh, entire coverage either. No, but no. we're just for our RFM winners. Yeah. Thanks. You got an advantage. Zest, we'll get you this invite before practice kicks off. So you'll for be able sure. to check this shit out tomorrow. Yeah. I was very get excited. clever. I like that. <laughs> I like this. Uh, I like this entry a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it was very funny. Yeah. Send us your entries for next week. If you want an RFM invite, the season's starting soon. If you don't have one of these paid subscription bullshit TV packages... You like to watch F1? Send us your favorite corner and why. Yeah. Make us laugh. You'll win next week. Join, Mike. Join Zest and the other two dudes. Play is out. Okay. Now. Hold on. It's coming. It's coming. Yes. <laughs>